everybody. Welcome, welcome, and good time zone to uh, anyone joining us either right now live or folks who are taking the time and, and putting in the energy to watch us on VOD. Welcome here to Girls Run These Worlds as you join us for our Monster Care Squad series. Uh, picking up after a little bit of a break, we had a bit of sickness, a bit about it being kind of out of it. But you know what? We got most of our group here. Sadly, many will still need a little bit more time to recover. But we have our group here for Year of the Tempest Session 3. You have no idea how excited I am to get back into all of our monster care shenanigans. And oh my lord, we have another raid group coming in. Chicka D93, hello! Right at the top, we love to see it. We love to have your support. And you're going to see some adorable and or terrifying monsters. The two are sometimes synonymous with one another if you try hard enough. <laughs> but uh, before we jump into that, I'm just going to give folks a chance to just introduce themselves real quick. Name and character they're playing and role of associate character and pronouns. So uh, if you don't know already who I am, I am Angela lemos Mogrejo. I use she, her pronouns. And I am the MC game master, the person helping curate chaos in a hopefully engaging manner. Most of the time it's engaging. Sometimes probably people just stare. But you know what? You're watching us so that we win no matter what. <laughs> going to pass it on over first to Gask. Oh, God. I wasn't prepared. I was still trying to organize know, everything on my I one monitor. It. Oh, God. Okay. Hello. My name is Gask. Um, I play Aster, our resident wild child, and, uh, you know little explorer girl and on problem one of one of the problem children that i do not know how we're going to deal with uh our our father figure not being here for this play session i the child leash has come off guys we're free roaming um so yes aster she her pronouns gas she her pronouns and yeah get ready for some chaos today i guess as you do uh Speaking of uh, delightful chaos in, in a package that always surprises one with just how much uh, good times, good role play, and good character work, uh, Rue. It's me. Hello, everyone. I'm Rue. My pronouns are she, her, and I play as Ganon, whose pronouns are also she, her. The other child off the leash, off the chain, <laughs> ready. <laughs> no one to stop her from... Uh, bossing people around <laughs> as is her natural state truly we've reached uh the best of possible worlds for uh me the gm because farley is gonna have to be our responsible one so oh. nikki uh you work with that hello nikki hey everybody i'm nikki i will be playing farley the uh mycologist expert um uh i go by she her farley goes by they them and uh, if I'm to be the responsible one, we might all die, so. Thankfully, the system has no means of actually killing you. Otherwise, that would have been an actual possibility I would have included. <laughs> Not actually. I love my players too much. I am I am the shyest and most scared of actually killing my players. I just want to instill fear. Fear is much more interesting to me than actual killing. But on the subject of what our session is going to be today we are joining our players back in the midst of a rather difficult scenario that they found themselves in having received word last time in a warrior's downfall a mountain range in the world of agni that was currently being menaced by some sort of flying threat it appeared to be investigating the trading outpost that had been torn to shreds upon them first arriving into the area they discovered through not and not insignificant amount of interaction with uh, Aster's family connections of a giant mountain community that lives here, that it was a condor. In fact, a condor that seemed to be in possessing certain abilities that were unnatural even for the rather prized uh, birds that live here, specifically stone wings and icy aura and what seemed to be almost like tremors emanating out from said wings and a crown of thorns that was causing sounds to uh, have emanate out from around it. The group has discovered all of this belongs to the very respected Condor voice of the mountain, Sochi. And the group 
having taken their time to prep, diagnose the problem, and now in the midst of trying to cure the wounds, have are in the middle of a kind of interior mountain crypt that is that houses a lot of the bodies of the dead and where Sochi has made her nest. And after being pushed back and deciding to use up a supply in order to keep themselves in the encounter, that is where we are picking up with our group again, as you are in the middle of the, I believe it was symbiosis, yes, symbiosis phase where you are trying to directly administer a cure to the wounds afflicting Sochi. And as we jump into session three, titled With Vitality and Emotion. So, picking up where we just uh, left off at the end of last session, our entire group just got beaten back by these wings, by these tremors that have been let out, sensing an icy breath that has nearly taken all of them. You are all in the midst of this, and you have chosen to spend your supplies to keep yourself grounded. Now it comes back to your turn, and uh, from what I recall, you are currently on your control track on at a D4, where Sochi is at a D10. So if you're going to attempt to do a cure move, you would be rolling with a D4. So what you're looking for here is to try and make use of the moves available to your characters or the moves available in the symbiosis phase specifically. I believe we had, you all have most of your character aces still available. And I believe you still have, uh, you did not get a session ace, but I think you did have a critical ace saved up. If I'm remembering that correctly, if someone else wants to correct me on the notes for that, please um, feel free. I, I used my session ace last time, um, uh, but I, I think you were right about the rest. I used mm -hmm. my character ace because I was rolling like garbage, and then I used my character ace and it was useless anyway because I, <laughs> I rolled a five. Ah, uh, yes, six. the the unfortunate luck of Gask has been absolute terrible rolls, except for like one roll that you rolled exceptional on. Mm hmm. And the cat that blew um, on that dice hurt her paws. So like, the 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 absolute karma that passed on to her. So I will not be asking her to blow my dice today. We're going to keep that in mind as, again, we pull everyone, viewers, players, and such back into this confrontation with, again, this is a massive bird. When I say, like, it's a big-ass condor, if you are not someone who has ever seen a condor in real life, they already start at pretty massive. They're like a whole person's width and wingspan, not more. This is the size of a dragon. So think, like, 30, 35-foot wingspan. Big bird with icy like, talons and a, a crown. Take... Our um our little mascot Abigail here and measure how many Abigails long this condor condor is. How, how much would you say? Given that your the cat I believe is only about a foot long. Yeah, maybe be maybe about thirty two. Abigails long. We're That's at thirty a lot cat. Of Abigails, folks. <laughs> That's too many We're Abigails. At thirty Abigails. But so We're at thirty uh, Abigails guess, and yeah. counting. <laughs> so thirty so, Abigail situation. Yeah, this is a this is a rough one, folks. We we we've reached critical mass at twenty before. And now we're at beyond that at thirty, Abigail status. But I must ask my players, what are you going to do next? Because right now you've been pushed back and you've managed to hold yourself down, but you need to figure out a way to either get yourself in control of the situation or give yourself a bit more of an advantage. So, who would like to take the first move to try and get some sense of the situation back in control? My first move was to try and distract you with Abigail so that I could think of something and that didn't work. <laughs> so if anyone else has ideas, uh, uh, I'll... I'll... <laughs> I... Mm. I kind of, Abigail, get your face out of my hot chocolate. Thank you. I kind of want to do get in the way and just kind of like, I don't know, set myself up in a way that I'm kind of like standing in front of the other two and just kind of, I don't know, yell at the, at the bird or something like, Hey man, we're just here to help. We're just here to, just here to help you. Please work with us. Help us to help you. Um, but I don't know if I can do that. I still have you a could, player ace, so maybe you I'll could. Just use it that. would be rolling plus grit. 
Yeah. Okay. Let's. It do would that. push. It would push her back, which would mean you establish control again. Yeah. Let me do that. I will spend my character days. And sorry, you said a D four, or is this no, no, no. That, that's still? if you're trying to do cure. The oh, D four oh, okay. is if you're trying to do cure. You're okay. if you're just doing. Uh, if you're just doing a normal thing, uh, a normal move, it would be the 2d6 plus grit. And then if you want to use another character ace that you feel is appropriate in this, then uh, that would that would be ideal. Yeah, I think I will do that. It's going to be 10. A 10? A 10. A 6, a 2, and a 2. Okay. On a 10, you channel the danger away from you and toward the monster, push back the monster on the control track. So what? So you're getting in the way. Do you say something in particular to try and deal with them? Yeah, using my most calming voice, which isn't much. I'm just going to be like, it's okay, it's okay. We're, we're here to help. We're here to help. Um, just going just gonna to try and get a little closer to you, uh, Crocodile Dundee style, where it's just like one of these. I'm just kind of inch my way a little bit closer and just we're here to help it's okay it's okay um you uh i'm realizing uh checking in with our producer that we uh, might be having a slight tech issue very soon so we're probably gonna like go off just for a couple minutes folks real soon but uh, i'll leave you on this note so you have something to savor and uh, relish as we are handling those small issues and go to an early break so you do all of that and there is a genuine sense of like the bird, which again, towering over you, very big wings, looks at you and you start hearing, you've been hearing a bunch of like voices speaking that sound like a hymn coming from the direction of the crown. But you also very clearly hear one voice attempting to call out in the midst of all of that. And it seems like that voice just, it, it sounds very gentle, but the tone of the voice is gentle, but they seem a little bit panicked. Like, uh, I really don't want to actually do this to any of you. Can, can, can you please solve this? Uh, help, help please. And it sounds like someone Someone like the situation with the dragon turtle. Someone else is trapped somewhere within the condor. Mm -hmm. So it seems like that will be the situation we'll have to get into right after we deal with this very early break to resolve some things real quick. So we will catch you all again very shortly. We apologize. But as is common in streaming stuff, tech gremlins uh, appear uh, with a sneak attack and a vengeance and the moments you least expect. So uh, we'll be back in about two minutes. So we'll see you all very shortly.
Hello there again, lovely people. We understand that uh, there was a, a moment that you may have imagined a break. Yeah, yeah, the week went on a break for a couple, for just a couple seconds. We had to take care of a small little uh, tech thing, but we are back and uh, we arrive back into the fray <laughs> with uh, a nice welcoming raid. Hello there, Yanchinona. It's so good to have you here. Oh, we, you just finished the shadows off with y'all. Hello there. Well, thank you for sharing the love. We hope we can pass that along uh, to other folks as well. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. You catch us as our, uh, I'm trying to remember the term we came up for for Farley. I think it was Shroomkin has decided yes. <laughs> <laughs> to go about trying to calm the massive glacial stone winged condor that acts as the voice of this mountain range in this world and has suddenly heard amidst all of the hymning the hymn sort of noise and voices coming out of the bird especially near its crown another voice seemingly calling out for help to try and get out of the situation so that is what the party has done and mechanically by nature of having gotten in the way of the danger very directly in the way of the danger, I might add, uh, you have moved them back on the control track. So they are now at a D8 towards you, which is good because uh, they, if they keep pushing you back and back, it's going to get worse. But now you have control back. You have managed to reacquire control. So now you would be able to uh, try and roll for cure if you wanted to at this time, if you feel like you have enough aces and want to risk it. Or you can try and use other moves to try and move yourself up on the track. I'm a lot of aces, so I'm going to pass this off to you guys. I do not have my character ace, and I'm very do not want to risk rolling with my luck <laughs> well, on this. Remember, you, you have character aces for all of your stats. It's not just one. It's for all of them, remember? Okay. So you, you would have had to have given up only one of them in order to make sure that you could have stayed in the fight. Oh, yes. I gave up grit um for yep. climbing on the guy um i don't know were you any ideas uh not any clear ideas but i was trying to see if there was we're something we could here. do it's the time to half ass things <laughs> <laughs> and this is true this is the moment in which remember leash is gone mm -hmm. <laughs> Dad's distracted. Let's go. <laughs> Give it a shot. Like, and some of this too, if need be, if you feel like you there is not an explicit move that covers it, give me a stat and an argument for something, mm. and we'll come up with our own tiered result of that. I am more than willing, and I think we're all very capable with how flexible the system is to come up with something that fits our needs as well. If you feel like something here doesn't cover that, this is the role should always follow from. What is your character trying to do that we can uh, put to chance? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I was looking at set em up, the move where when you use subterfuge, trickery, and subtle action to mislead, trap, or confuse, or misdirect the monster. Just because it seems like there's like another entity that needs rescuing along with the monster, like maybe distracting the monster will help us figure out how to yeah. get them out. Um, but I haven't, I haven't put together what exactly I want to do to mislead the monster. But that was the direction I was like thinking. Yeah, you have you have knowledge that you can make use of. You have uh, your uh, your boxing particular skills, you could try and go punch it again, but I think I recall <laughs> last time it did not work quite as well as you would have hoped. That was and a again, it's, it's a punch would it was, work. It turned, I think, yeah, we ruled it, it turned <laughs> yeah. into a headbutt, but again, remember, it's mislead, trap, confuse, or misdirect. Some of that might just be uh, knowledge base and such. It, it is being mm. done through your fine skill, but it could be right. like the main bulk of it is using like your particular expertise. We'll just roll it with fine because that is what the move is asking for because I think it's appropriate. Right. We can still do that. Cool. Um, I think the thing I can think of is that uh, we established earlier that 
the monster is kind of drawn to sentimental items, right? And that was what yes. Garuk had uh, lost their their wedding ring. Um, oh, right. Oh, I almost <laughs> forgot we had them lose the wedding ring in order to keep y'all, I think, in the fight. I think that was yeah. part of it, too. crying in a corner. That's why he's not here today. Yeah, they're just, like, sitting there, like, what am I going to tell like, my wife? Like my wife. My <laughs> wife. Oh, God, what am I going to tell my wife? Honey, um... <laughs> You know that You're not gonna believe ring? this. <laughs> the good news is that I'm alive, so I think we should really focus on that. <laughs> but okay, okay. Why why don't why don't uh uh why don't we have you roll actually just to see what the result yeah. will be and maybe we can build off of something from there if we're having a little bit of trouble coming up with something. Let's let the roll see what the result will be. So 2d6 yeah. plus fine, and let's see what happens. Then you can decide. If you think an ace that you have among your set is is appropriate, and if you haven't used it already, because remember they are each only one use per session. Oh yeah. Oh, I forget what I used last time. I think. Yeah, I don't remember which one of these. It might have been grit because I know I used one of my character aces. That is true. I think it was grit, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy, I rolled a one and a two. <laughs> oh. Okay. So plus fine. I assume that's yeah. not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, the fine is just plus one. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Dang. Hmm. Uh, this uh, this is interesting. How do we want to have this? Yeah. Um. I'm also trying to think what. Sentence, like sentimental item they would have pulled out to try to grab the attention of the monster it could be that like the monster just doesn't pay attention because they're really unwilling to give up like their actual sentimental item so they just pull something out that's like this could kind of work couldn't it and like hey, it's not this is really the receipt for like this pack of gum that i got and it's really sentimental to me yeah it's it's like one of those one of those touristy magnets that you just bought from the ghost or from the uh, giant gift yeah, shop yeah yeah <laughs> yeah this feels sentimental to me <laughs> and like maybe throws it but instead like the monster just comes towards me because I'm still holding just like the, the items shirt that, that are says, actually. I heart warriors downfall. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so I I think I know something that works for that. Ruth. So, so one of the best things that the, the the guide has suggestions for for moves is to turn something around. So this is going to be a setup that works against you. One and two. This will be how. Um. <laughs> so you do the thing. You try and offer the not sentimental item. <laughs> and initially the bird just starts like Farley has calmed it down enough to where like it's not actively going full feral mode anymore. But the moment that you try and give it an item that isn't actually s significant or sentimental to you, uh, it kind of like puts its beak like near like in the ground and then it gives you this look of like its eyes narrowing and then it digs its beak in the ground and it's very confusing for a second what it's doing and then it lifts up and you are like catapulted on top of its head Amazing. so so the setup that is now working against you is that if either of your companions want to try and do something you they're going to deal with a minus one to their role because they have to watch out for your well-being. Assuming they care about that, though, I will say on the condition that they care about your well-being, you could ignore <laughs> it. Your allies could do that. But this is where you're at currently. I will say none of that will, uh, because the movement doesn't specify about it, there is no loss on the control track. But you are taking a penalty going forward. I think that's a good area because it does not yeah, specify yeah. what happens on a roll sense. below seven to nine. I think this is a yeah. good way that works narratively and mechanically for you. Yeah, so I think that makes sense. Um, I think Ganon is like, just do what you have to do. I'm good up here. I know what I'm doing. You, you are, you are like sitting... unwilling to admit that you need help. <laughs> yeah, just like, well, I'm good. Do, do what you have to. Don't worry about me. 
I'm fine. <laughs> you are sitting on the most uncomfortable crystalline crown chair on top of a massive dragon-sized bird that you have ever <coughs> seen and sat on. Well, this is a scenario, exactly, Aster. This is where I want to be. I wanted this to happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Giraffe in a mud pit. Um, I, if I recall correctly, if we can get this crown out of uh, the... Uh, uh, this condor, then it would be in less pain. So maybe while you're it up there, less we pain. could work on that. Um, it it you would also lose what it, the crown itself is is effectively a wound because it's a crystalline mm -hmm. set of like thorn thorns that are like dug into it. Which I should also know it's a very uncomfortable spot for you to be in, Kanan. Besides the obvious, it's just physically very uncomfortable. But if you get rid of that, you would heal one of the wounds. So you have to figure out. You have to either take the risk on trying to cure a wound <clears throat> or you need to try and do something else to move you ahead on the control track so that you have a higher chance of doing that. Are we still at a D4? Sadly, you are because okay. yeah, you haven't done okay. something to succeed moving up on it. Yeah, okay. I, I'm, I'm trying to think of what to do for that. But the only things that I'm thinking of are like things that I guess bring the monster more under our control um okay i have a crazy idea seeing as how dad's okay. not here um what if we did we go on three and then the two of us also climb up on top uh, of the monster yes 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 and just like just like uh, uh we gotta go we gotta let's just do this and just let's... like climb you know uh, i might need okay. some help not great at climbing but you are so you can just okay so that, yes. In that case, you each you each pick uh, this. The move typically says you the other person picks uh, a move that or a training. Uh, it hmm. picks a training or a background that you feel would be able to help you out, and then each of you will roll the appropriate stat related to that. So okay. I think it's much better and fits in more narratively that each of you picks a training or a background element that you think is appropriate for this. Roll two d six plus that stat. And then we'll see what happens based on however many 10 pluses you get. No matter what, though, this is going to take a minus one because of trying to be careful around yeah. Kanan. It is okay. just for this roll, though. It is not a forward minus one. It is just a one for this next one. Uh, Yeah, I don't think uh, grappling would probably be my best bet. Force. Uh, and I haven't used my character ace on that, right? So... I can still nope. use character ace. Yep. Okay, that's a d4, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be 2d6 plus a d4 for you, Aster, plus <laughs> uh, force that you're doing on that. And Farley, what are you trying to do in order to get in a, uh, to help out with this? Okay, hear me out. Um, I have investigation for fine, and I feel like that could be used to be like, to try and like see what the best spots to like cl cling on to would be without like doing too much injury to the condor, but I don't know if that <laughs> would actually work. Uh, no, no, I think that's a that's a good use. Being perceptive okay. and being able to like pick out details that are helpful in a critical situation that is a perfect use of that training. So both of you, two d six plus your appropriate stat, and tell me what your results are individually. That's an 11. Okay. That is great. Aster, what do you have? Less than that. That is a 9 plus I got a 2 in my D4. So that's two, that's 11. two 10 pluses. So, yes. yes. Okay. So we go on three. For every 10 plus, you get a hold one. So here's what happens you get to pick amongst this list. You get to spend a hold on each of them, uh, on one one hold for one of the options. So your options include advance on the control track, rescue a teammate that rolled a six or below, push the monster back on the control track, gain a session ace, refresh a critical ace. I I feel like one of them fits very narratively appropriate to to get cut on out of the situation. Yeah, I think I want to be nice and I'll let you. Or do we want to be in the same situation as Kanan? I will let you choose that because I think that's funnier. Freewheeling. 
on a magic condor ride. <laughs> and now we get uh we get <laughs> copyright struck. <laughs> Sorry. Did someone Disney count please. was that two seconds i think the limit used to be like two seconds on Twitch. disney's already writing out cease and desist order there's All just right. there's just like a bouncer but he's wearing a mickey mouse hat just suddenly appearing in oh, chat God, that'd be like... terrifying <laughs> for your nightmares everyone buff mickey mouse is a bouncer no i don't like it no oh, on that i'm note... gonna fuck you up <laughs> Uh, you should definitely do a character that only uses that voice the next game you play. I think that'd be great. God yes. damn it. Oh no, Aster hit their throat wrong. Oh no. <laughs> okay, okay. You, you, hyenas, getting back to the, to the mechanics of this. So what would you like to spend your holds on? Because you have the option, again, advance on the control track, which is pretty necessary to yeah. get you in a good position to cure. Rescue a teammate. Push the monster back on the control track, which you already done quite a lot for it and I, you have a session and critical ace possibilities as much as the aces do uh tempt me uh one for all and all for one and we are all just going to be riding this really uncomfortable crown for a little while i think i, I would like to regain some control personally yeah because if mm. this monster decides to shake us off and we're on the d4 that's not gonna be good <laughs> yeah yeah you'll have to keep spending your aces and you're gonna run out sooner or later mm. yeah so so i'm gonna so if i'm hearing you right one one of the hold is gonna go on advance in the control track which will put you at a d6 what is the second option gonna go on i guess rescue Ganon. okay so where rescue we're like just sitting and securing her yeah you're basically you yeah. basically made it that you can investigate the creature you are all three of you are currently riding the creature if i've heard you right but you are not in a dangerous situation huh. there will be no penalties to your roles going forward because you managed to hold on to it and now you are you're not in an advantageous position. Um, there's no way I can rule this as advantageous whatsoever. But, it but is cool you as have hell. the position to do something. <laughs> it is very cool, literally, because it is a frost bird. Oh my god! But yeah. that is that is where you're at. Um, it is now the creature's turn. It's not really like turn, but the creature will. Yeah, it is going to. It is thrashing around in this moment. And as a result of thrashing around, its talons uh, begin accidentally raking across its own wings. And in doing so, it starts generating a feather storm around it of swirling dirt and feathers that is going to push you all back one or pardon, is going to regain control. It is not going to push you back. So you are still on that, but you are you have lost control. So you need to regain control. You have all fallen off, but you have not been pushed back just yet. But you need to regain control. And right now it is on D8 and you are on D6. So it has taken its turn. And having done that, you get the sense also that, again, the him is an ongoing effect having been so close that your acuity rolls are going to have a penalty while that thorn crown is in effect causing that wound and ability. And you get two other bits, which is one, the stone armor all around its wings is hard to do things with force. So that will also be taking a penalty while that one's active. And the icy aura just makes it kind of dangerous to be near this thing. But you could try and spend something to maybe try and neutralize it. That is the kind of information we give you because you did so well on those previous roles and you were literally on top of this thing's head. So you have that information. What is the next go? If we're going in actual order, it would be Kanan. But if anyone has an idea, now's the time. We get back up there, right? <laughs> Just for the fun of it. It's, a, it's a, like a fun little slide. I wouldn't mind climbing back up, actually, and trying to yeah. yank that thing out. Yeah, well, we're D68, so mm -hmm. I think if we try two turns and then a cure, maybe, mm -hmm. to see where we're at. 
yeah. unless we both fail and it goes horribly wrong we'll see <laughs> <laughs> yeah you if I one of you is going to try and climb up we're going up there would be the most appropriate move if you want to give that a shot i could try that we're going up there yeah, I think you've got the best skills for this one. Yeah. Yeah, I got... We'll see if the dice agree. Um, <laughs> I've used my character ace on force, but... Uh, no, really... Yeah, because even my climbing thing is rolling force anyway. Um, yeah. So, uh, hmm. it, it wouldn't matter. So, yeah, we're going up there. I'll try and get back on this bad boy. <laughs> You're riding okay. my condor. This was not a scenario I was imagining for today, and yet here we are. <laughs> I should really have imagined this. So roll the 2d6 plus your force, and then tell plus me what the result is. Zero. Seven! <gasps> I'm okay. happy to be average, guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, it's very critical that you said you were going for the crown, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, because if you were going for the stone armor, that would be a six because of the penalty to force rolls. Yes. But I'm ruling it how uh, the system is really open in designing creatures. So I'm going to rule it that it applies to doing stuff related to that wound. So, But you're going for the crown specifically. Having done that, so it's a seven. The result is you get stranded halfway there, spend an ace to move up on the control track or lose your footing. So if you're willing to give up another ace of something else, you'll be able to move up on the control track, which will give you d8. And then we'd be D8 versus D8. Yeah. You would uh, be D8 to D... Uh, yes, you would be D8 to D8. Yes, D8, D8. Because you can share it, but the moment that anyone moves again, they the other one gets bumped back. Okay. Is how the uh, control track works. It's a very flexible, constantly moving kind of thing, so it's a little bit of parts to manage. But what happens, Aster, that you get stranded halfway <laughs> there? Stranded might not be the right word in this situation, so what happened? Clean. Um, <laughs> I think I probably get like a rope and like, like not a grappling hook, but like get it like secured around part of its frown, I guess. Lasso. It. Yeah, yeah, lasso. That's it. Um, and then it just kind of starts flying, and then I'm like flying in the wind beside it, like a flag almost, and I'm like trying to climb up, but then I'm like, wow, this is actually really <laughs> hard to like. I'm being buffeted by the wind, and I guess. Um, do we have any aces to spend? This is well, just, you can use is... like your your fine or whatever for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yes. this is this is a matter of you uh, of you giving up just another one of your aces. Just justify to me like what do you lose access to in a way because the aces are each their own kind of like training and supply. Uh, like... My fine is approaching wildlife <laughs> i guess this is i think you've pissed ah. off the one i think yeah. that's appropriate to give up as an ace that you've taken the route that no animal really likes of trying to ride it directly <laughs> while lassoing its head i'm like trying to sneak into its blind spot while i like swing around in the wind <laughs> it's it's going about as well as you'd expect that kind of thing to go yeah, so that that's what I do, and try and try and climb up, <laughs> spend that, and I, I, uh, yeah. So then move one up on the control track, then I guess. Yep. So, yeah. So that that puts you. It's D eight, D eight. So you have a pretty solid chance of getting something with cure. If you also use a character ace, or if someone else tries to do a character ace, so. Uh, for Farley and Kanan, you do have a strong sense that Aster has given you, you have an opportunity if you want to try and set yourself up a little bit more, we can go for that, or you can try and deal with one of the wounds right now. It's your call, but you know that this thing is going to keep thrashing around and it's going to keep... It's going to keep being a danger, not just to you, but to the neighboring communities if you let this thing get away. So what are you going to do? I think I would like to try and cure. Yeah. I think it's worth <laughs> trying to cure it right now and see if we can start getting rid of some of these wounds. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. So which one do you want to go for? You have three options. You have the thorn crown, the talons, because that you've seen uh, it, dig, it dig and create its own feather storm with, and you have the stone wings. Which of them would you like to try and cure? And what are you trying to do to cure it? Okay, I think Farley is going to just kind of uh, stealthily run their way over and just kind of like do a little like slide underneath the uh, uh, bird and try and tackle the talons just like. Whoosh. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just wondering if I have a mushroom for that. Where's my mushroom list? I have it somewhere. Yes, my auntie talon <laughs> mushroom. <laughs> oh, I have I have something that's good for curing wounds. Mushroom. Right next to my shark repellent mushroom. Do you have anything <laughs> uh, like an analgesic or I for do. I have some care? I have some uh, reishi mushrooms or reshi mushrooms. I don't actually know how that's pronounced. It's an analgesic, uh, anti allergen, anti inflammatory, antibacterial, and an antioxidant. And apparently an anti talon claw yeah, thing you know. as well. So, but I've okay. also got uh, some uh, some turkey tail, uh, which can help clean up toxic environments. So I think what I might do is just kind of using my uh, uh, my mortal mortal mortar and pestle, just kind of like grind some up into a fine paste and try and just like slap a bunch on while trying to like dodge out of the way of this bird moving around. Okay, so that is going to be rolling with a D eight and your and your character eight. So that'd be D eight and D four. Tell me what the result is, and we'll see what happens from there. There is my D8. Come on, Harley. Oh, no. Uh, There's a okay, face turning going here. It's not that bad. It's an 8. Okay. okay. 8 is still good. Oh, wait. Do I, write, do I roll the D2, D8 twice or just once? Just once. Okay, yeah. Then it's 8. So D eight. So on the seven to nine, pick one. You have the option now. If you ignore, if you done a ten, you would just heal the wound, and that would be done with it with its abilities. On the seven to nine, you get to pick one. You heal the wound, but at a great cost. The wound mutates, shifts, or changes. But you've seen this before. Advance on the control track, or your cure fails, but sets up your team and give one teammate plus one to their next move as long as it uses what you set up. The great cost mm. would be you reset both the players and monsters' position on the control track, and then advance the monster two segments. So that would put you all the way back uh, at D4 uh, and trying to deal with it. So this is this would be extremely rough trying to do this. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a rough one. This is a situation where you gotta decide which which Dang. poison do you want to deal with. <sighs> Dang. Excuse me. Um sorry, what was the sorry, no, go ahead. Oh, I was saying I kind of like the second option, which was the wound mutates, shifts, or changes, but you've seen this before. Advance one on the control track. Yeah, I think that's probably the easiest way to go here. No, yeah. this okay. is my pro talon mushroom. It makes it stronger. <laughs> it's my one-up um, mushroom. It's just a one-up mushroom for Mario. So... <laughs> Just, I'm just the 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 bird grows three times bigger. Uh, <laughs> the result, no, no, no. The it grows twice its size if it's the normal one up, but if it's the super ultra mushroom one, then like the DS <laughs> ones, it grows five times bigger, That's which is concerning. <laughs> um, so the talons. Here is how I'll say it. It is going to work. You apply the mushrooms, and unfortunately, they do not manage to take care of the wound. Because you've chosen one a path that does not deal with that. And as a result of it, its icy aura has now become a noxious poison aura. However, you are used to dealing with these kinds of things and highly and like pretty inured to a lot of the effects of this. So if you try to do something to follow up on that later you have a sense that it won't be as bad for you, Farley, to directly interact with the creature. You have made it a little bit worse for Aster up there, who's currently hanging on for dear life. But you have advanced on All the right. control track. It's okay, I can hold my breath for like five minutes. <laughs> you are at a D10 now, because you've done that. So 
Kanan, if you want to try and follow up and do a cure as well, you have a D10. So you have a pretty good shot of doing something on a D10. And the creature yeah. is now on a D6. Okay. Yeah, I think I am also going to try to cure just because th this is a pretty good shot right now. And mm -hmm. <laughs> rather okay. than which wound... attempt to push it back with some other move. <laughs> which which wound do you want to deal with? The thorn crown, the crystal talons that now have a noxious aura, or the stone wings? Ooh. Um, Let's go with the, I'll try to go with those stone wings again, and uh, this time not use a headbutt <laughs> and force to try to get them down. <laughs> okay. What would you like uh, to try and do? I think, hmm. Thinking either my grit or acuity makes the most sense because it's analysis and then medical research. I'm thinking medical research that maybe in the time that we've been oh, as like Aster and Farley are doing things, I'm kind of like shifting through my notes like, okay, maybe I've got something in here that obviously that weird pressure point thing didn't work. Maybe it doesn't work on giant birds. Um but I, I like find some other information on something that'll cure these stone uh, wings that like, again, is a little bit to do with maybe not necessarily applying something to it, but kind of like looking for a point of contact where like, that's like the origin point of that stone. Oh, that's thing. a, that's a good way of looking at it. And maybe, uh, maybe it's like finding where you suspect the initial wound might've happened that's yeah. caused this to spread it. You know, it'd be a good thing for that. It could be looking at like variants of people who've dealt with petrification. Ooh, yeah. So you probably studied like how initial wounds like start to spread out and cause like there, there can be certain afflictions that mimic petrification, but are really based on a wound. We could, we could say it's that because Kanan would know about something as weird and like niche as that. And yeah. Kanan would know about it. So I think she like, yeah, pulls something out with that. So let's see. I do love the visual of Aster and Farley screaming in the background. <laughs> Aster hanging off this bird with a rope, <laughs> Farley dodging the talons like left and right, um, Matrix style. And then Kanan just being like, my, where were my notes? On yeah, Cam camera film. cuts to Kanan, very beautiful yeah. uh, 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 <laughs> symphony orchestra playing in the background, just calmly like, hmm, hmm. Yes. <laughs> we're just blurry in the background, just like, ah! <laughs> it like pans like further out to me in like the foreground <laughs> and I've like put on a pair of glasses and like all oh, right okay these notes we'll have to look at these later that could probably be useful <laughs> does this is a weird one but does is Khan on the type of person that like licks their finger before they turn each page like yeah that? yeah <laughs> just <laughs> turn there's like a few moments where they're like they can't get the page to turn and they're like oh oh no and then in the background you all are just like please god <laughs> gone and hurry so d10 and a d4 for your character race oh got it okay i got an eight on my d10 okay let's uh see that character race oh, what was that oh it's cocked god damn it <laughs> now it's a one <laughs> it was cocked okay. on a three how rude <laughs> wait it got cocked again roll it again mm -mm. no 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 i mean before it was like oh before it was on the three <laughs> i'll let you have the three because i i can't foresee the possibility of of a d4 <laughs> being cocked that doesn't make sense to me it's it's my little tray has like a weird <laughs> oh okay so okay so so, so it is so it is the it is nine so not quite 10 that you needed for for automatic cure so kind of you're in a similar position again that farley was in Ooh. which of these three would you like to do because hmm. again you could deal with the you could deal with the wound entirely oh god and it resets us back to D D four is that what it is? Yep. Oh God. 
it's a rough cost it, it but it yeah. gets the wound done so it's probably one of those where like if you already had two dealt with you would want to take it mm, that makes sense or even like one dealt with uh this is this is just a rough decision but you gotta pick one yeah Hmm. I think I'm between heal the wound and having it mutate to like well, advance. Is the, the monster control. going next? Oh. And then we would all have to because then we'd be set up as a D4 next and then have to lose That's all our true. aces for that anyway yeah so i'd say just advance in the control track again i guess yeah i think the wound mutating um and advancing seems best i feel like that seems stronger than just so the plus one. so much you are you are your group is at a d12 now uh so here's the thing the stone that, again, as we said in the previous session, was being built, majority of it from the literal stone that was taken from a lot of tombs and graves that are like slotted, like comes like containers and spots in the walls of this interior sort of like crypt in the heart of the mountain. The stone starts falling off, like you find a spot where you think there might have been an initial wound. And like you apply something to it that is able to start dealing with it. But it's the potency of what you apply is too strong. And as a result, the wings no longer are stone. They turn completely to ice. Well, that's fun. And Slippy. now they they look hmm. as though they're about to start <laughs> generating a blizzard from them. Well. <laughs> That escalated quickly. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool, cool. So, are they going to generate a blizzard from them? <laughs> Not yet, but that's that's what... Well, actually, now it comes to the creature's turn, to Sochi's turn. Um, the Gunnan is just like, oh, interesting. Interesting <laughs> change, and it's just like jotting down a bunch of notes. This is very good research, everyone. I... This is good information. Kana, like, <laughs> turns her back on Sochi as like taking down notes, and in the background you see like the the ice starting and forming, like looming. <laughs> fascinating. Yeah, um, <laughs> fascinating. Yes. Here's the thing. Uh, here's how this changes its abilities. It's no longer making tremors in the ground, causing mini earthquakes. You ever, you ever seen a video game where someone gets access to ice magic and they start making like a glacier path whenever they use a move that like does like a line strike? Yeah, that's what's happening with the birds. It just flaps its wings and there's just like trying to punt all of you up into the air with glaciers, like glacier spikes going up. It can't quite get to Aster, but it does push you all back on the track one. So you are back to D10. <laughs> Pissed it off. It wanted, it, 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 it wanted. You still have control, remarkably, but this is by <laughs> sheer nature of all of you coming together to try and do something. So it is back to your turn. I guess I'll try and cure him. The crown. It's a, I haven't I haven't given it a shot yet. <laughs> We're at a D10, right? Yep. D10. Trying you the character ace. Okay, uh, character ace. I've given up force, fine, and grit, so I have identifying flora and speech and debate. <laughs> uh, I don't think either of those apply to helping get rid of this crown. You could say you found something nearby. You you are from here, Aster, so oh. you could have found something along the way that could be helpful. Yeah. But I want to be clear. I don't need you to make it hyper-justified BS. I just need some manner of BS. 
oh, so my speech and debate could be drowning out this. No, the, unfortunately, on. <laughs> on that case, no. I will on that one. You I will still said, say no. I know, and I also invalidate myself. Have you okay. ever met someone who's hypocritical, or shall we say, a GM? <laughs> No, okay, no, no. I, I, I will. I, I, if you feel like you, if you feel like you have a good, uh, like justification, seriousness, in all seriousness, uh, and it sounds pretty sound to me, then I will let you have it. It's just a matter of I just need you to justify what you're trying to do. Yeah, I'll. I can. Hmm. Yeah, I think, like, some kind of flora, medicinal flora in the area that I know is given to people to help, like, calm them, I guess. Uh, sorry, I do not have Farley's uh, tome of medicinal words. <laughs> uh, I mean, Aster probably wouldn't know it as, like, a, a, like a, a, like a written bank of things to use it would probably just be more like common community knowledge of like mm -hmm. yeah it, it, it'd probably be the equivalent of like so for example i i grew up and it was like we had uh what was it vapor rub and like yeah, seven up were like that. the cures <laughs> for like dealing with stomach aches and stuff like that it would be the equivalent of that but in like a floral form people would know it or as like, like i guess here we have when you get nettle stings there's these things called dawkins and you just rub them into that and like See, it would be something I've like that been... Yeah, I know. I've I've never understood if there's science behind that or if it's just to make you feel better. Um, but I also still sing the little song because that's that's the where the real healing comes in. Uh, yeah, I'll say that this is the flower that one of my moms gave me when I threw a tantrum about wearing shoes. Um, <laughs> that's so cute. It's a D10 <laughs> and a D4. That's so cute. Okay. Just eat this flower. <laughs> D10, D4, let's go. That's a nine on a two, but a minus one, but it's a ten. <laughs> That's a ten. Okay. You, you're going for the you're going for the crown, right? Yes. Do I have that right? Okay. So you all watch with getting a 10 on that. Uh you watch as uh you start hearing just the voice clearly only you aster you're hearing this voice like you all start hearing the hymns start to calm down but aster you being so close to it you watch as you apply uh as you apply the herb to the crown itself the thorns just sort of like start fading away and you hear it sounds more like someone speaking from deep inside of a cavern which one you literally are deep inside of a cave but it sounds even more distant and you get the sense that removing the wounds is giving whoever this is more access to be able to communicate with you. So you've got one wound down. It's two more to go and you're still on D10 and you still have control. Good job. That's one wound down. Serving up to you guys. Yep, Farley. I think uh, you're next up before the right. creature takes the next go. I'm going to take another shot at uh getting these talons healed up i think i'm going to uh rip off a piece of my skirt and tie it around my face to try and block out some of the noxious fumes and i'm gonna go back in now that i know that that combination of mushrooms did not do the trick i'm going to try a slightly different variation and uh, also throw in a uh, uh, little bit of oyster mushrooms, which is good for combating serious diseases. I feel like this probably deserves a little bit of the big guns. Uh, so Might I'm be gonna... a good time. Might be a yeah. good time. And I'm still D8, right? No, no, no. You're at D10. Oh, nice. Because remember, <laughs> uh, uh, I think it was like Connor, uh, Connor and Aster were able to get it to D12, and then yes. they pushed you back to D10. And I'm going to use an ace for that as well. Okay, uh, it's another nine. Okay, it's a nine. Does it mutate and you get more on the control track? Does it fail, but you set up the team? Or do you heal it, but reset everything? This will be it's your gonna, second wound. I think, I think I'm 
I think I will just have it fail and I will set up the team. Yeah, okay. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. You you get the sense that uh the combination you use it should have worked, but the recent mutations that it's gone through, I think have made it its its constitution so strong that it's not potent enough. It's mm -hmm. not a potent enough mix that you apply to it. So it's a it's a rough time trying to deal with it. And you aren't a you know that it should have worked, but it does not. But you do know that having applied so many different things to it, it is being worn down. And it very much like is not going to be able to keep this going for much longer. Just gotta find the right combination. That's what it comes down to. You uh, I believe it comes to Kanan, or Kanan, did you already take your turn for this go for the creature? Uh, I don't. I think Eight, I went seven. first. Yeah, so you did. Fine. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So it is Kanan. If you have, if okay. you want to give it another go with the wound, it would be plus one. Yeah, I think uh definitely we'll give it another shot. We have a chance <laughs> before whatever the creature is gonna do that might push us back. Um, we're at a D10 still? You're still at a D10. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to go for another Cure Wounds. Um, I think going to try to go in with surgery. I think Ganon has like, placed herself somewhere because it, in the last one we said that the mutation is now something we've seen before. So I think yeah. she's kind of put herself in a place where she's like, okay, I didn't really get what was going on with the stone wings but this frost wing that i have seen before or i've seen something very similar um mm -hmm. so she's kind of placed herself uh where like maybe the creature isn't moving so much like maybe closer to the body where it's a little more stationary um rather than like at the ends of the wings or near its head she's kind of like gone close to the chest um and is just gonna try to like start extracting these like stone frost wing bits to see if she can just start like physically pulling them off with some of her tools so she's like pulled out like these surgical these like giant surgical tools that she has and is just like i'm just gonna try to i'm just gonna try to go ahead and go for it <laughs> roll roll and let's see what happens Okay. Is this my D10? Yes, it is. I was like, oh. you can roll a D6 if you want. I wouldn't advise <laughs> it, but... <laughs> I do not want... Um, okay, I've got an 8. But my surgery is a plus 1. And then the plus 1 going, so that's a 10. It's Whoa. a 10. Oh, <laughs> oh God. I'm, I'm as stressed as all of you are about this because every time it's like a seven to nine, I'm like, this could be a whole other thing. Because if you keep doing yeah. mutations, the, the stone wings are down and that actually, um, that was actually like a really good decision, Kanan, because uh, its remaining wound can only push. It cannot take control back from you. So, Ooh. which would mean you would have to do another move to reestablish control. Oh my so, god. Okay. Thank goodness. Yeah. So <laughs> you start taking out some of the bits and this is this is uh you can feel free to to ex uh, explain more of like what's going through Kanan's mind but just to give you a sense of context like this is a dangerous thing. Like this is the most mm -hmm. direct in-person interaction with a creature that you've probably done like ever. Like this is not like something someone's brought into a class this is yeah. not something that's been like calmed down or neutralized. This is an active threat to you and your allies. Yeah, I think uh, Ganon, like prior to this, was in a more almost like performing the academic role. And I think as soon as she gets <clears throat> really close to the body, she just kind of goes into like a really folk, like a hyper, like ADHD, like hyper focus kind of thing where she's just like, I'm, I'm in the zone. This is just a part of a creature. I've done that a million times before. I've done these 
you know, it's it, moving and doing all these unexpected things, but the main surgical process is the same. And I know how to do that. And I, and like, it just like her confidence turns on a hundred percent. She's like, I know how to do this. The other stuff will solve it later, but I, this thing needs to be done now. You do it. And all of the glaciers, all of the ice that was filling this cavern, because they were starting to spread from trying to like poke up from out of the ground and like attack you all. They just like sink back into the ground and slowly move back into its wings and it slowly goes back to being normal, its normal massive wings. You have healed the stone wings and the icy wings that came from the mutations. The only thing left are the talons creating the noxious aura. Here's what I'm going to have the creature do on its turn. While you've both while you've had two successful wound applications trying to deal with this, the creature is now extremely agitated and instead of trying to do something to push you all back, it's going to start taking flight and it's going to try and leave. But I'm on them. I'm on his <laughs> I know. It, oh no, you, <laughs> So, so here, here is what I'm going to put you. Here's what I'm going to do to try to give you a sense of like the tent of right of increasing the tension. You have. I'm going to give you at most two rounds to figure out something or try and get a successful wound cure. If you do not, you have to do this all again, as it will have time and the wounds will open up again. No. <laughs> oh, we're not doing that then. <laughs> Yes. Like so, but but boss. that's basically what. <laughs> well, well, yes. Essentially, it's it's like no, no. I'm gonna go. This will be round two. I'm gonna go become my final four. <laughs> we have to I one stage it. <laughs> you have to one stage it. Otherwise, it transforms into the worst form. Yeah. While it's doing but... its transformation sequence, you're just beating the hell out. <laughs> we have to finish it now. <laughs> oh no! It's gained in vulnerability during the transformation sequence. This is a ripoff. <laughs> Why must you do this game? This is cheap difficulty inflation. <laughs> but that is essentially what it's move that I'm going to make use of in this for its turn is you are on a time limit, like a severe time limit right now. If you don't finish it either in this round or the next round, this whole thing starts over again as it will just go somewhere else and the wounds will fester and open up again. So with that knowledge, what are you doing next? It has not taken control back. It has not pushed you back yet. It has just simply started to take off. And you know that Aster is in danger also of, you know, falling off of this thing. And I will say it's probably going to lead to a loss of supply for your next run to take care of Aster if Aster gets significantly hurt. That'll be the other aspect of it that I will use. So what do you? what is your group doing now that you see this thing like... It's and it's massive. It feels like a gale force wind coming at you as it's just starting to go. What are you doing? Okay, I'm gonna go for broke. I'm gonna try and heal it again. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. My idea was <clears throat> to email girls on these worlds Oliver Twist style and be like if we have to do this again it's not our fault please sir give us some more episodes <laughs> <laughs> right I'm going to expand yet another character ace I'm going to use some force on this one do we still have a critical ace maybe that's worth using no to... I used it last time ah, I think gotcha, I think okay. you used it last time you, you you were in a, a lot of what didn't go well in the synthesis and diagnosis phase was that you didn't get to get a lot of session aces or yeah. and you've yeah, been having to rely right. on characters. That's sort of yes. been what that's why the first two phases are so critical is that they give you the resources to make this be more of a breeze because this is normally not this hard. What'd you roll? That was an eight. I'm gonna roll my d4. And I swear to God. Please, 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 please. <laughs> 11 yay all right yes. all right all right so yeah. what, oh, what is this this is, this is the last wound so this is this oh. is the talons you have been trying multiple things on it farley what does this moment of triumph look like i want you to describe it what happens i'll set up the the context and everything it is gale force winds it 
Aster is hanging on. And while Kanan has managed to successfully do like the surgical bits, Kanan, you are getting like blasted back against the wall as soon as the wings are starting to take <laughs> off. Like show it's gonna get take it's gonna take off. What well, do you do, Farley, in order to f- deal with this wound that has been it has been eluding you how to deal with this thing for like a good amount of time now? What do you do? There is no time for science. The gale force winds, I imagine, are just forcing Farley like flat down on the ground, hand like grasping onto one of these talons as hard as possible just to hang on and stay in place. And there's no time for thinking. Farley's just going to reach into their bag and grab every single mushroom that that they possibly can and just shove it all on and just kind of like rub it around and get it as into as many places as possible. Just go for all of it. Just use all of it. There, there's initially a very, very bad reaction, like kind of allergic level reaction to some of them because this bird is not used to dealing with so many different potential things entering, like affecting its skin. But buried within your bag is, uh, it is a very rare mushroom to get and it is very dangerous to have in Arctic and tundra and like winter settings because it can drastically affect the res- uh, the ecosystem around it because it is a type of mushroom that is known to actually consume frost and uh, that is around it. You are able to put a piece of this on there and it just spreads like the mycelium of it grow out and they just, just and the talons lose all of the frost, lose all of the crystal, lose every bit of it. And the bird that has been about to fly and take off with Aster still on it, just kind of flops on the ground. <laughs> like think think like a like a like a cute, very tired like puppy. Like like those kind of like vines little videos where a dog just goes flump. But it's a dragon sized condor <laughs> and it just goes Oh, this cutie. <laughs> and the rest of us are just like with the, yeah, <laughs> with all the the, the gale force like winds thrown the back. <laughs> There's a couple moments pass. A few beats. One, two, three. Four. And then the thorn crown, the crystalline thorn crown, and the crystal that had been affecting the talons, they slowly cool into what looks like a tiny little flame. And it grows, but not like a wildfire. More like something akin to the fire that would be tended to beneath the hearth of a home. And you watch as emerging out of the flame is an individual. They are very short. They are, think we're talk like hobbit level height. Like, they are small bean. And their outfit is, uh, my best description for it is somewhere, but it's a cross between a street medic and a very tender, like imagine your grandmother at like during the holidays would be wearing like a cozy sweater and everything. Uh, but the face, the skin is a uh, very deep brown and for uh, arms heavily calloused on the hands and the arms are like extremely muscular. Like this is someone who like does like heavy manual labor of some kind. And you, uh, for anyone who's ever interacted with like blacksmiths and such, there's a couple probably burns along their arm and their hands that look like from someone who might've accidentally like burned their hand on something working on a forge. And uh, you see this individual just sort of like pop out of the flame and go, Oh, is it over? Is it over? It's over. Okay. 
Okay, that was, oh, that was stressful. Oh, dear. I thought visiting a friend would be far less stressful. Uh, and this individual just sort of like sits down next to the fire. Oh, hi. Hello there. Hey. So, what happened? Yeah, I should, uh, should probably explain that. Uh, by the way, I'm the voice you were hearing of, over there. Thank you for hanging on. That looked very dangerous and, and might I say, very brave. Uh, also very, very reckless, but too. I, uh, it, it did look fun. It did look kind of enjoyable, but, uh, I will say, uh, I, I would be a little bit terrified to be doing that kind of thing. Not gonna lie. Um, yeah, I was trapped in there. Yeah, well, in, in them, actually. Uh... I should probably, well, before getting into anything, I should probably introduce myself. Uh, my name is Ida. Um, I, I don't know if any of you are particularly a faith or anything like that, but um, I, I often go by the title of the Hearthkeeper. I kind of watch over a lot of the mountains and a lot of homes across all of Acne. And you are all getting the very distinct impression you met another god. Another god has appeared right in front of you. And wasn't the the catacomb or the tomb? I guess wasn't that named the hearth? Was this after yep. them? Mm. Yep, mm. this is named after them. The they they're mm. sort of a patron deity of the mountains and of particularly this place. And uh. She carries on after she says that. It's like, um, again, thank you for helping me. I, I really appreciate that. Um, as far as how this all happened, um, I'm still piecing that out for myself. I remember... I remember having wings flying through different areas and thinking to myself that I needed to protect a home. I needed to make a home for people. And I just remember picking up a bunch of stuff. And I remember a lot of crashing, a lot of breaking of things, and a lot of stuff happening. But all I could think about was I had to make a home and I had to make it a place for people to feel safe again. And you well, in doing that, you kind of destroyed other people's homes and took a lot of, you know, sacred stone and dirt. But I guess we did name the hearth after you, so maybe is it stealing if it's named after you? Well, you know, sometimes <laughs> home is chaotic, so it's it's okay that you that you did that. You weren't you weren't quite yourself. Um, which uh, which friend were you here to visit? Oh. Sochi. And you see that Sochi is like rising up and is like, oh, oh dear. Oh, I have a very big headache. I, that was, that was a lot. Oof. My wings are really stiff. Why does my head feel like so shaky? And why do I have so much dirt in between my feathers? Like this is, this is a, a, a really this is again dragon sized condor that just is kind of like starting to like brush itself off like <laughs> a cat. It's, it's like a like, lasso rope just hanging off its head. It's like, like a little what, spaghetti. What meat. is this? <laughs> yeah. Did somebody try and leash me? I don't I don't know if this is This isn't even oh, bad. Yeah, or... fine. Sorry. <laughs> oh we well that's have fine. That back. <laughs> just sort of like gives it back. Thank you. God, it's like we could reuse that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we need to get that down out of this cave somehow. Oh, uh, I could get, I could get you out of the cave if you want. I don't know exactly know why I'm back here right now. I was just trying to go out to fly. Do you guys happen to hear any like? Screams lately when there was um, rain. Well, I remember, I remember 
the rain happening and I was a little worried about how cold it was going to be and how it might affect the area around us, especially the village. I was, that was the first thing on my mind afterwards. There was somebody who, I remember hearing somebody saying that they don't understand all of this. I heard someone's voice and it sounded very familiar. I could have sworn and see Ida sort of like like cock cock her head and just sort of go over and be like, not to give it a sec. Um do you all mind if I if I just try and make Sochi feel a little bit more relaxed? I think we're both recovering a little bit from all of this. Yeah, I mean yeah. by all means. Go do you want to get out of the cave first? We could go down to the village. It's you know, very good for accommodating big people. <laughs> I'm sorry, just as a question, um, are there still like lots of uh, personal effects kind of strewn around? There are, and you do, but you do see that Ida has been walking over to it and sort of like slowly and uh, slowly pulling it together. And you see her like kind of like snap her fingers and you watch stuff getting sorted into like little piles that are like floating magically uh, near her. He's like, hmm, I should probably get these back to people's homes. I should probably make people homes again. I kind of, hmm, I'm going to need to think about this. Also, before I carry on, I just want to acknowledge, hello there, ladies of D&D. Thank you for the raid coming on in. It's always a pleasure to have you coming on it, coming on to support us over here. We love you, and uh, I think you love us as well. And also, hello there, Cubus Octopus. Yes, it is me. It is I. It is Angela. And also, uh, Farley with the mushroom hat. <laughs> who uh i suppose m just miladied the chat but with a mushroom hat so my mushroom my Celine. Guy. mycology <laughs> <laughs> mycology <laughs> but um yeah i i think this is actually a pretty good time to take a break while the party is just taking a sec to just be like oof uh yeah that happened and yeah it looks like ida so far is just a similar story to what uh, Zahara, the primeval maiden, told you is that they've heard someone else, but it seems like Ida is taking a little bit more time to think. So maybe give them a few and we'll see if they can give you some more information talking with them. And also you get the time to recover and process all this. So we will catch you all in about 10 minutes. Uh, thank you so much, Raiders, who've been coming in. Please stick around. We uh, love having you here. And uh, you know that we adore you so much and we are glad for the support. So we'll see you all in about 10 minutes, everyone. Take care.
Hello there, lovely viewers. It's an absolute pleasure to have you back here on Girls Run These Worlds for Year of the Tempest, our Monster Care Squad uh, series that is happening here. We are in se uh, session three slash episode three with vitality and emotion. And you join us as our crew has, after many attempts, many tries, and many gambits, finally healed Sochi, Voice of the Mountain, a massive condor. And discovered that apparently very similar to what happened with Zahara, the primeval maiden, the deity that rules over wild nature. It seems as though Ida might have been stuck in some way with Sochi as well. The group has taken a few moments to recover and rest, and Ida has managed to calm Sochi and relax Sochi down. And you see that a lot of the little bits of like surgery and such and uh herbs and, and things that were applied by Farley and the slight strain on uh, Sochi's neck and head from the uh, lasso uh, efforts by Aster uh, have been relaxed. And uh, Sochi just sort of like bends, uh, bends her body down and is like, well, do you want to get back wherever you want to go the fast way or do you want, uh, do you want to go the long way? Fast way, fast way. Arlie's a little nervous about being that high off the ground, but is always down for an adventure. So, yes. Absolutely the fast way. I... <laughs> Not the kind of high that Farley's <laughs> trying to get. <laughs> um, you do see, like, on the back of Sochi, uh, on Sochi's back, a uh, thing very much like an Avatar Appa, the Air Bison style, like, little, Aww. like, sitting spot that's there. <laughs> it's now been set. And again... Ida is a very, like, not imposing presence. It's just, like, they're, like, cross-legged. It's just, like, and has appeared to have cr just randomly generated a cup of tea for themselves. And she's <laughs> just kind of there, sort of, like, kind of nice. Would any of you want Absolute something? <laughs> I think Ganon kind of, like, cozies up to them and is, like, so what was it? Like when you when did this first happen? It was just like peppering them with like questions. Like, uh, so how long has it been since you the two of you fused? Did you do it on purpose? Was there you were just trying to visit them? <laughs> how did it feel um, like? <laughs> yeah, uh, if you if you are if Kanan is asking all those questions, um, this is actually a very convenient and very sound <laughs> way to actually for me give you this info. Um, yeah. So Ida takes the like... time and tells you. Ida says that it's only been like at most like what feels like for them a couple of weeks. It as far as the bird sightings, it, it it lines up right when the bird sightings like terrorizing a lot of the area started. So you have that info. But the way that Ida talks about it, she says that she was going to visit uh one friend here and she was going to go visit another friend uh over in the primeval garden. Uh Someone who, Christ, give me one second while I try and remember the, how to pronounce this name. Thea or, damn it, it's Irish and I can't remember. I literally wrote down the pronunciation and I can't find it. What it's, is it? Let me help. Yeah, drop it in chat. Yeah, F -I -A -D -H. F -I -A -D -H. like, oh yeah, Fia. Fia, that's, I knew it was something like that. I couldn't remember. Yeah, I don't judge, our producer is mocking me in chat. <laughs> That's literally what I was about to ask <laughs> if Gas. If only you knew an Irish person. <laughs> if only we so had Fia, one in cast. <laughs> Fia or, or Keenan as well uh, uses the, the names interchangeably, but someone they mentioned just by the name of Fia the Ageless. Uh, it used to be Fia, uh, Fia the Ancient, but... Uh, Fia, as Ida explains kind of sheepishly, uh, took a bit of offense to that name. Every now and then, because it's like, I have kept myself very well. I am only 1,500 years old. Like, said something to that effect. And I, I, Ida has, like, quickly been trying to reassure them over the years. It's like, you, you, there's there's no sadness in growing older. There's nothing, there's no loss. There's nothing bad about that. It's, it's fine to grow older. And them just being kind of petulant and hiding out in the primeval garden last time they checked. But before they were able to do that, 
they started hearing a voice crying out to them. And it started to happen the most when the rain began. Ida was very worried about the mountain range because, again, it is their primary location where they have the strongest uh, members of their faith present there. And they worried about all the creatures and such that would be affected by the rain, knowing that these kinds of rage-inducing like droplets had been affecting things there. And so Z so went to go check up on Sochi, and Sochi seemed to have already started to succumb to the rage to some capacity, and Ida reached out to try and help them. And right before the whatever this fusion or containment of Ida happened within Sochi, Sochi... Uh, so she mentioned hearing a voice, a kind of feminine voice, calling out saying, I don't know how to process this. I don't know what all of this is about. This is very difficult. Where am I? What, what happened to the place I used to know? What? Where am I? What is this? What is this body? What is it? Like just a lot of these repeat like statements of someone seemingly like trapped somewhere. But a lot of the details started to trend and lean towards the the side of like sensory overload, like immense sensory overload. And for a split second, Ida like tried to to like call out because they could have sworn they heard a voice speak to them as well. And for a second, they thought they heard one of their siblings they don't know which one but they're pretty certain one of their siblings is in trouble they don't know how or why but that was the last thing they heard and then all Ida can remember after that point is home hearth protect family. It seems like from what, uh, again, Kanan, you're asking all of these questions. So it's very, this is a very easy way to like, you ask the right question and you get the sense that the core of what happens when the, in these two cases for what has been happening is that the deities seemed to, the domains and aspects that are most revered by people in the area that they, that the deities embody get become the focus for while they're in that form that they are bound to so the dragon turtle for example watched over the tides it watched over especially a lot of the poor and a lot of the more like struggling kind of folks who were having some setbacks from how the recent tides and water had gone it just takes it to a degree that becomes harmful so it wanted to help those who were hurt in the like lower ring areas who lived closer to the coast of the tide. And as a result, it started to demolish them. So she wanted to be there to support people for the hearth, home, sentiment, family, connection. But not understanding or being able to sensorily process all of it just started to lose it. It was basically the equivalent of like so much input that you couldn't sort all of it out and it just became too much. And so they just went for whatever sort of made it the easiest to process. So yeah, that's the information you get. You get the sense that someone else, someone amongst the the divine is struggling and is probably at the heart of what this rain is. You don't know how, you don't know who it is or where exactly, but there is a strong sense that someone needs some support and some help. Well, this tea is great. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, if you're not partial to tea, I know also how to make cocoa. I, I did happen to uh, pick up from one of my siblings um, uh, cocoa powder and start experimenting. They, um, Someone else brought me this really delicious dish. It, it has a kind of like, uh, or not dish, a uh, drink they showed me on one occasion. It has like sort of like a golden brown color to it. They, they, this, it might have been chai, if I remember correctly. It's just, it's just a long <laughs> list of just a bunch of drinks that, from a bunch of different places. They're like trying to remember which one it was, but it's just like every time they say a drink, it just pops in their hand and they taste it and they're like, oh no, that's not it. <laughs> it's, it's like really good stuff too it's like someone who's like yeah this is your mom's 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 grandmother's mom's recipe that no one has passed on and everyone's just sort of figured out because they don't want to give it up yeah ganon's like i'll take that uh, here thanks <laughs> yeah uh did you hear that voice of someone sounding like they're trapped while you were trapped as well like did it get louder or more clear in that time it it was for a little bit i could hear it and there's a funny thing whenever days where the storms got worse i could hear it more clearly and they the the last bit of words I was able to get are were north storm coming. That was pretty much all the info I was able to get clearly from them. Again, they were they were from what I could hear, they were really distressed and I was trying my best to reach out to them, but it was kind of a lot to deal with being in being connected to Sochi and Sochi's uh Sochi's still a little frazzled by it and so she just sort of turns their big like head around <laughs> not not my favorite moment just still just so she's like really not into that I would yeah, not repeat not... <laughs> zero out of five do not recommend <laughs> stop doing that gesture uh but yeah depending on where you all wanted to end up uh Sochi knows where the village is if you want to bring her back there. That might be determined by Aster. I mean, yeah, this is kind of the god that a lot of my moms worship, so to the point where they named their burial ground after them. So, like, I feel like it's like, you know, <laughs> if you met a celebrity that your parent, like, if I walked into Garth Brooks and I didn't say, like, yeah, hey, shout out to my mom. Um, I think <laughs> I would be eviscerated when I got home and told her that. So <laughs> hey, shout out to everybody. It's your girl Aster here, just here with my bud, Garth. <laughs> or here with here with my here with my god friend Ida. She's just chilling out over here. <laughs> hey mom, you can stop mom. arguing now. I'm obviously the best child. <laughs> but um Hey, Sochi does go to the village, and there is a there is a moment initially of oh god, like the Godzilla kind of effect because <laughs> you know Sochi was technically on a rampage for yeah. a good chunk of time before you got here, so there is an initial moment of worry, and uh, you do see one of your moms. Uh, there there is a there is a definite moment of like. Her, like, you can see even from this distance, her considering, should I get out the sword? Should I get out this giant flame sword that I have? Is this a good idea? This might be a good idea. And you kind of have to, like, go up to her and go, like... Yeah, like, slide off <laughs> before the, the they land and be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's good. I know they're like, that. why did we send children to do this job? <laughs> Where's their dad? <laughs> Where is their dad? Why does he not? Why is he not watching over them right now? <laughs> their dad He's... is currently looking through the remains of the rubble, trying to find his wedding oh, ring. No. <laughs> it's uh, you know what? Hell, I I I'm kind of curious, so I'm gonna roll for this and see what the results of that will be. <laughs> roll for wife, <laughs> not the wife roll. <laughs> They couldn't find it. 
Do they yeah. not get like advantage, like a plus three or something? Because they're really like they For really love. love their wife. You know what? They 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 are the kind of person who would spend an ace on this. So this will this will determine whether or not they found the wedding ring or not. Okay, I'm glad you made the argument. It went from a five plus four, so it's a nine. So they Yay, found it. It's a little beaten up, baby. and it will have to be shined up. Comes in. <laughs> it's like you listen to me, GM. I am breaking the fourth wall as my character here to tell you you should make sure this ring gets found. And I'm like, solid answer. Okay, I like the reasoning. <laughs> the power but of yeah. love and friendship once again. Just. Me, me bringing the fourth wall, just going, didn't you just try and lasso a giant condor board around the head? It's like love and friendship. I said <laughs> peace and love. <laughs> My lasso is the shape of a heart. <laughs> but you do, you do take some time and you come back. And you do find that um, your moms are all very impressed with you aster and even more so when they realize who you have with you yeah so they're gonna think twice about fighting when i need help next time <laughs> <laughs> there there is a genuine look of respect and like you you do have that like full like I'm walking with a celebrity effect coming back to the village like people from like all over from like various walks of life and such that are living there like are all just kind of in awe seeing the hearth keeper materialize somewhere some of them are like in shock of seeing Sochi like fine again like some of the little kids because a lot of the little kids don't know the extent of like what Sochi did are like trying to go and climb up on top of her and it's it's such a stark contrast to what was just like an hour ago of like ah this giant dra dragon sized bird is trying to kill us to the bird is just like slowly uh, she's just slowly lifting her head and like giving the kids rides to like slide down her back and stuff it's a very strange level of peace that you managed to bring to Sochi and a lot of the folks here but uh, it is also very weird to see, uh, I guess the best description for it is like kind of subdued Ida as well. She's kind of like shy having the attention around her. She's almost like she doesn't quite know how to deal with actual people. If a god could have social anxiety, that's kind of the vibe you're getting. And also, Ida's only, like, max three feet tall, whereas your moms are, like... No! At minimum, 16 feet tall. <laughs> so she's just sort of like, Hello. Zuko here. A little pocket-sized god, they could accidentally squish her! But yeah. They're... They all, like, all of your mom's heads just kind of turn and, and look at you, Aster, sort of in response to this situation. So. We solved it. All's good. Yay! Uh, Aster, why don't we, uh, maybe... Uh, go back to your place. I'm sure that your moms would love to show off some pictures of you. And uh, then we can maybe sit in front of the fire and chat with this this lovely uh, god a little bit more. And I'm sure that they would like to sit in front of a nice warm hearth, maybe. Make them a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, oh, that's, that's they make really the fantastic. best tea. Oh, tea. I love tea. Just, does, like the cutest little like like claps are just like, yay, I'm so happy. It's like tiny little claps. Like just the tips of her fingers. Like, she's a small bean. Like, everything about her presence and such does not suggest anything about what she is. She is just a small. Bean. Like, even her steps, like, 
Uh, she, she does not take after my partner who on occasion, despite being average height, walks significantly faster than me and is always like two or three feet in front of me. And I'm like, I, I can't walk this fast. How are you walking this fast with significantly shorter legs than me? I don't like this. Short but yeah, people they're just are just like... built like that. That's years of I mean... spite. <laughs> Hers is less spite and just more like casual, cozy walking. Again, and she's just occasionally like looking at some of the homes and some folks who like maybe were coming from homes. They were kind of ruined down the mountain and she's sort of like, sorry, 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 I will fix that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Like, super, like, shy and embarrassed the entire time you walk into Aster's home. Aww. I feel like the people who are being apologized to are like, oh, my God. <laughs> she spoke to me. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> she spoke to me. I'm, the God of the Heart destroyed my house. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> How do the I God of the Heart destroyed all my house. It was awesome. <laughs> it was great. Like, <laughs> they spent way more time destroying my house than anyone else's. You can t see the care they took with the damage they did. You arrive back at home with Aster, and your moms are just kind of there. Like, I imagine you have a, a massive home that accommodates all of them as a result of this. If all of your moms live with you, I don't know what the nature of your I, home is. I That's thought they asking. all had their individual homes or with each they other, did, did. I guess. And then I just kind of bounced between all of it. Right. You're right. You're right. I think we did talk about that. You're right. I think all of them, uh, here's what I'll say instead all of them are kind of like at your front door, and they, I think, all have just a rare, awkward moment of looking at each other like, so who's going to be the one to try and go in? None of them acknowledging the fact that the door is secure. It's, like, it's far too short for them to get in. They're just like, so who's going to take this one? <laughs> yeah, who's going to take the L on this one? Oh, it would be really funny if in their homes they had like an aster sized door for like a, little, like a little doggy flap almost, but just like a little door cut into the, the doors in their Cannon. home. Yeah. Canon that the, their homes now have, a, now have an aster sized door because that's far <laughs> too funny and wholesome. <laughs> That's it's adorable. too big for little Aster to open by herself. She needed her a little door. <laughs> but um, I think they all like Ida just sort of like like waves to them and sort of says uh, like gets them like talks for a second. And while she speaks very quietly, they all seem to hear her very well. And just makes it clear. I think this might just be a discussion between us. Uh. I'll talk with all of you later. That works. And all of them are just sort of like a god. Effectively the face of someone going, a god is scheduling a meeting with us. How do you process this one? Yeah, I I, I, I feel like, what would a mom feel like if Garth Brooks gave her tickets to her concert? To his concert, Here's some backstage know? passes. I'll see yeah. you in between sets. <laughs> yeah, one to one. This is one to one. <laughs> but your mom's head off. They they all have a look of like we're proud. Question mark is the best way to put it. But um, you can feel free to describe your home as Ida just comfortably like finds a spot to sit down in it. Right, but whatever it is, Aster. I feel like it's just a mess, first of all. Aster did not clean before they left to go join the Rangers, but it's just a bunch of knickknacks that they thought were interesting that they found out in the wild and exploring just hanging everywhere. Like, whether it be like a loose claw, scale, pedal, anything. Everywhere. <laughs> it looks like you know, you know that Ghibli movie style maximalism where it's just everything, like Howl's Room and Howl's Moving Castle, it's just everything all at once. But it's just, instead of like jewels and trinkets, it's more like naturalistic things. Like, 
an eggshell here or like I don't know, like a, a pine needle here or something. Ida just kind of looks around. It's pretty neat. Yeah, it's my hoard. Sort of like sits up on like a little couch somewhere. Sort of like magics a cup of tea. Talking time again? I suppose. Did your friend have a question? Like sort of uh, as he sort of like directs towards Farley because Farley was the one who made the initial suggestion to just come over here and just talk. Talk. Um, I'm just I'm just wondering if uh, you knew that we have done this before. We saved one of your siblings uh, a little while ago from a uh, dragon turtle. So it's not just you that's been going through this. Hmm. This is very curious. I didn't know that. You have we any don't... idea who might be doing this? I don't know if it's a targeted thing, but it seems kind of coincidental. Mm, well, there's a couple of folk who maybe it could be. Um. Hmm. Yeah, which of your... You said something about hearing about a storm in the north. Are there a few siblings you can think of that are in, I guess, that direction? Um. Well, there's it's actually quite a couple, quite a few of them over there in the north, so I don't know how much this will narrow it down, but I can give you the names. Um, uh, the Weaver is one of them. Uh, it's a... Uh, Isolt is a very cranky person. Is a nice way. Is the nicest way I can put it. My older, my older sister is a. She's she's had a bad uh bad run with people she's gotten close with. So she's kind of she's kind of like not doing so well around other people. Very beloved. Very very cared about. Also has a pretty bad attitude most of the time. But, uh, don't tell her I said that. She'd get very mad at me. <laughs> um, The biggest one would be Abira. Abira is the warden of strength. She's one of the most prized in the North as well. She tends to... A lot of folks celebrate her through open bouts of uh, combat, revelry, uh, dramatic performance battles and such uh, over in the uh, city of Chantico. But I can't imagine this is the kind of thing that would actually affect her. She's, uh, well, strong. Uh, I am not the strongest of uh, 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 of our family. I'm, I, I am a small, I am a small but significant force for uh, kindness, peace, and uh, community. I don't do the whole fighting thing. At least not if I don't have to. Um, but. I think of it, the other two folks who it could be, well, there's three other folks. There's Sahira. Oh, no, wait, sorry, not Sahira. Uh, there's Isla, the Dancing Moonlight, who's uh, the daughter for Esawalt. And then uh, maybe the two who it could possibly be. One is Mara, the Grieving Goddess, and the other one is Doris, the Suffering Deity. One of them deals with loss and grief, and the other one deals with uh, suffering. It could be one of them. They they do tend to have the biggest uh, low spells of all of us. And, well, it's kind of an unfortunate thing with the nature of what we are. We are what all of you make us to be. And it's kind of a thing where if some of you start to imagine us as pretty sad because that's what you expect us to be, we'd start to become that. Because it's what you expect us to be, so it is what we are. Because all of us, all of the ways you think about us kind of exist all at once. Hmm. So maybe it's a community that's affected and not just one of the deities. Yeah, that could definitely be. Well, oh, hmm. thank you very much for, for your input. I really appreciate it. Is there anything else oh. that we can do for you? Can we help you with rebuilding the homes or anything? I'm not good at it, but I am willing to try. <laughs> hmm. 
I think I have this place covered, but uh, I would say if you get a chance to in handling all of this sort of mess and sort of says in reference to all of the rain stuff happening and the, the rage and sp the spreading mess, um, if you could go find some time to check on Fia, I think the last time I got to see them was, I actually, I don't even remember the last time I got to see them and I was going to try and take a visit soon, but I think with all the trouble I've caused over here, I'm going to be kind of busy for a bit. And I don't, you know, some gods really like to lean into the whole like powerful deity of uh, ex absolute strength within over a dominion and make use of it for powers. I, I don't, I don't, I don't really do that. I, I like to prefer working with my hands directly sort of notes the like very calloused and scarred hands. It's kind of how, kind of how I get things done the most. I just kind of like to, it's, it's busy work. It helps keep me going and it helps keep folks going. It's how you, you keep faith going. This whole time Aster has been mentally vi like projecting the image of Ida, but just a little bit taller in her mind because she was like, "Okay, gods, if we picture them, they exist like that. Let's just let's just help this girl out. <laughs> let's just <laughs> let's let's just help this god out." And like, she, You're she's, like, I'm trying she's to just grow focusing. you. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> like mm, just a couple. I love totally. that. <laughs> That's incredible. I love it. <laughs> Aster, can you roll me 2d6 real quick? Yeah, you got it. Double six is coming up. Well, it's a two and a three. <laughs> Did she okay. Grow, she, she grows smaller. <laughs> she like... No. Remember what I said? Every version of them, in a way, exists. Depending on the, the, ver the intensity of someone's faith, they exist at the same time, not in the metaphorical sense, in the literal sense. So you just create, you just see pop up next to Ida, another Ida that is a foot and a half taller. <laughs> okay, maybe and I don't have this god math down. <laughs> <laughs> But can hey. only Aster see this god? Or is it no, just like, all of Whoa. you can see <laughs> it, it is very much a like a uh excuse me kind of moment. <laughs> Ida's oh, by the I way don't... is carrying on like nothing has happened. Ganon's just like, I don't mean to be rude, but there's a another one of you <laughs> right behind you. <laughs> certain sort of like turns to look and both of them do the it's very big like the spider-man meme of like <laughs> except one of the spider-man's a couple of inches taller, taller. <laughs> a it, bigger version of you um I, I i don't know whether i should be insulted one of you tried to think up a bigger version of me i i don't know does should I feel more insecure about this? Am I too short? No, not at all. Aster's sweating. Not going to admit this. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird that that happened. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> the other Ida is just sort of there, like, like raised hands. Just like, I, I don't know what to do with this any more than you do, smaller Ida. <laughs> I don't know, Big Ida. I don't know what we should do about this either. They're just kind of confused by this. Wait, well, with I the have two of you, great... it'll probably be easier to fix buildings, so I guess that's good. Yeah, hang on. I have a great idea. I'm picturing multiple Idas as fast as possible. <laughs> as many as possible. So that they can build that they can build all the houses back together really fast. <laughs> I'd army. <laughs> so here's what happens. Uh -huh. It works. <laughs> yeah. But you definitely hear from the village a lot of startled cries as many people are like, the goddess, the hearthkeeper has appeared in my home. 
<laughs> and it's just happening throughout a lot of people's homes because when you imagine that, I don't think you set a limit on how many to imagine. So they just keep no. popping up until you stop imagining more. Astra is fully closing her eyes because she's like, this mental thing, this is all in the inside, baby. Someone has got to stop her. <laughs> We're going to have to knock Astra out. <laughs> <laughs> Just see Ida just walk over and go. No. <laughs> oh, okay. That's not helping. <laughs> well, I guess there'll be like a bunch of insecure people around here now to sort of think about how they look and how they move through the world. And if they're doing enough for people, oh gosh, one of me doing this was already a lot. Like, look, just imagine it's like, like look what I did Ida. I I, I... <laughs> no, 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 oh, I was like oh one Ida just like trying to comfort the other Ida while being <laughs> like stressed out it's okay uh, you don't need to be insecure I on the other hand <laughs> <laughs> it's just a it's just a string of that exact ex statement being expressed but like I Aster, here is the strongest sense I can give you of what you've caused to happen. It's Aww. very much an encapsulation of that, like, see, look what I did. I made a perfectly good uh, simulacrum of a god. No, you didn't. You gave it anxiety. You gave it multiple kinds of anxiety. But there's no need to feel insecure about what everyone else is doing around you when you are everyone else around you. <laughs> yes, but, also, but her domain all of the is other the heart. Are three inches taller than the original. <laughs> <laughs> no. The problem so with that line of thought, though, is that, that the problem with that line of thought, though, is that you are <laughs> you're a perfectly good deity. It's got anxiety. Look at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, Mistress. Here's the strongest sense I can give you. You, you. You. This is what you've caused, and you get the sense that. The problem with your line of thought of like, they don't need to if all of them are, are like everybody. It's like, yes. But their domain is community, peace, and the hearth, which means they are inherently by nature of their domain and focus other oriented. They're going to keep focusing on other people and not their own well-being if you make a form of them that didn't have the not anxiety part. Yeah, and you but didn't now know they're about the that. other. They're focusing on themselves as the other. You see? It's, Aster, it's turtles all the way down, except it's a loop of deific anxiety. You've created a deific Garth loop of anxiety. I moms, okay? What do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> Every mom has a Garth Brooks now. Yeah, you get a Garth and you get a Garth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just so chaos everywhere we go. Oh, oh my god, I needed you, that laugh. You could, it's been you a week. You could just say the gods are what we picture them and not expect me to... <laughs> <laughs> I just like the mental image of all of them slightly taller, like Russian nesting dolls. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. I was start like I was like, oh, we get we have to get bigger, we have to get stronger. So it was just. I nearly <laughs> spit out my water. Holy shit! <laughs> this is this is oh. the best interpretation of you make <laughs> you know, the gods what they are. <laughs> so that situation eventually being resolved through whatever means you find possible you you have some time to sort of rest before getting back into the swing of things the village is very thankful for what you have done for all of them and sochi is sort of like still a little confused as to what this whole process has been she doesn't quite remember everything that was happening in the process. But she seems to understand that the kids love her again, like more than maybe they used to. So she's she's like, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to say anything else. I'm not going to question it. And you get the sense that part of uh, that with that thanks that she is willing 
to offer a gift to all of you as part of the thanks of helping her and Ida. So with that, mechanically, is what gets you to move on. So when your work is here is finished, pick one from the list below and either ask the guide where the next job is or tell them where you're headed next. And yeah, feel free. Oh, we, you, don't, you don't have to necessarily figure it out right this moment, but just by the next session, have a sense of which uh, advancement you want to get. And bear in mind, again, that Sochi is the voice of the mountain. She is literally one of the... She is one of the birds and creatures here who helps watch over people and make sure that the mountains remain a safe place for all creatures. She is, she's voiced both literally and that she interprets the will of like how nature changes around here, but also metaphorically and communally, she is a protector of other creatures here, which is why her going berserk is such a, was such a concern because it was like your protector suddenly turned on you. But you resolve this, and we kind of skip forward a few weeks leading into a couple of months of there are small case incidents. There are minor things you have to resolve, which is dealing with the rain still being intermittent and coming in. And it's not until sometime later that you are called back to backfire where Ephemera says, we have a lead on something else that's come up. Um, I would just like to note that before we left the uh, giant village, I would like to restock my um, supply of mushrooms as much as possible. Just like get a couple local ones, just so I'm prepared for next time. <laughs> I have to do that. And while, while I'm sorting out a quick thing uh, mechanically, and if there are any things that you all would like to discuss as having been happening throughout those months, waiting for like the next thing, because the only real big lead you got to follow up on after that was to maybe try and figure out where Fia was uh, in the primeval garden. That's like the really only, the only big lead you have from Ida. But other than that, these months just sort of pass by and you can feel free to fill it with whatever things came up for you. I also imagine Farley probably just stole a bunch of mushrooms that Aster had growing in their eyes. <laughs> Maybe. I asked permission while you were asleep and you didn't say no. <laughs> yeah, just Aster conked out like, Aster, hey, hey Aster, breathe if yes, can I get some mushrooms? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> These seem like they've just been sitting here. <laughs> Probably have. I don't think she's one for um cleanliness. <laughs> I think Ghana and I uh, in like the interim time just is like oh, these were these incomplete notes and is just like running and bothering a bunch of professors and researchers at the academy. Um, and like kind of throwing around uh, our mentor's name or ephemera's name and is just like I need all of the most up-to-date information that you have this is very important I'm on a very important mission <laughs> I was not well prepared is this what you want representing the academy I don't think so <laughs> like as soon as they start trying to say something <laughs> uh kind of beef you up know, her, her specialized notes oh is that where you're you're thinking to spend the advancement on to to boost it on there or is this Ooh. just a, this is a narrative element I, i'm just yeah. asking stuff of curiosity i think it's just a narrative thing that she's doing just wanted to double check i didn't want to rob you of the chance to <laughs> to boost up something if that was your intention but um You know what? You're right. Why don't I want to do something fun? Because we haven't really gotten to use supply too much, or other, or or had too many a oh, yeah. ace uh, acquisition things besides from using like character aces a lot of the time. Here's what I want every every one of you to do. 
I want you to pick a skill that you feel in this sort of downtime, not downtime event while you are still going on like small cases to treat creatures who are dealing with the 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 rancor affliction from the reins of rancor. I want you to basically treat this as like, how are you trying to buff up your skills outside of just the gift that was given to you? And for every success that you get on this, I will let you choose between either a session ace for next time or you get an additional supply, which is used for other moves and could mean like something else possible. But you have to succeed. If you fail, then I, there will be a consequence from that going forward. But I think this is a good way to represent like what you've been doing in this time. And I'll be sure to talk to Minnie about uh, getting her bits in as well about this. But I think this is a good way to use the downtime sort of in between. Um, how many rolls are we going to get for this? Like how many chances? Only gonna get one. You're only one. gonna get okay. one. This is this is basically collectively thinking about I'm kind of pulling from the way that like uh, Blades in the Dark and other like systems that are they use the downtime and they're like, how did things go while you were out doing stuff? How has it helped out? Because I think this is a good way to implement that in here without it without having to step away from the mechanics of this system either. But yeah, it's just a matter of like what did what did you do in the down in the meantime in between before you got more news on this lead over uh over about the primeval garden. This is just a 2d6 roll for each of us. 2d6 with whatever stat you feel is appropriate. I got a 1 and a 1. Oh my god. <laughs> Back, baby. Oh my goodness. So, so my idea was that I was going to research the terrain of the primeval garden, which I guess is was a, a, a bad decision from the beginning because it's the primeval garden. But just to get some kind of like the right like climbing and exploring equipment, you know? I, I think it's a case of you try very hard to look into this kind of stuff. And I think it's less you don't find it and it's more you don't get access to it. Because I think some if you're working in backfire to try and do stuff, there is a lot of academic red tape to get into anything that's like this. Even if you are working for the Monster Vets, like some of it is like sensitive material. Because like there is such a delicate balance often between a lot of ecosystems trying to maintain like harmony between a lot of them that someone get again this is a reminder this is a world of magic so someone having access to the ecological underpinnings of a given like environment when you have magic can lead to very nasty things happening so it's less they know that you are trusted but you did not do enough ranger training for them to be like in their minds it doesn't mean you actually didn't do that it's just in their minds the people who are like are like the the bookend of it or the bookies for it are like mm, nah yeah they would hand aster one form and aster be like actually no thanks <laughs> <laughs> I don't do Maybe you say researching requires reading i don't i'm out i'm out i have to, <laughs> I, do I have to be write things and I have to know stuff and just sit on a table and look at books seems no. fake but okay <laughs> I feel like every time yeah. you walk out of a an office or something like a few minutes later Gunnan comes in with like all the correct forms and things <laughs> <laughs> like special badges and if you had just waited a moment you probably could have like walked in with her <laughs> There's just like several scenes of like that happening. <laughs> so unfortunately, no luck on your end, Aster. But what about for Farley and Kanan? How did yours go? I rolled a seven. So <laughs> j just slid in to a partial success. Okay. So I'll let you choose between you get a session ace or you get supply. 
what do you focus on in this time and which one do you feel is appropriately represented by either a session ace or a supply? Um, how do, how does the supplies work again? Just like mechanically? Um, is... Pull on that up right now. Pull on that up yeah. right now. I was trying to like. Just make sure I'm not giving you a, uh, an unhealthy. <laughs> Supply app track representation how well your team can tap into those networks. Uh, team share the same supply and begin with one. Moves may ask you to spend supply or gain it for certain effects. So it's basically something that kicks in during uh, certain kinds of moves. Gotcha. And also, like, uh, to bear in mind, too, that neutralizing some of the effects for certain creatures invo can involve spending supply or aces. So if you wanted an alternative, you could try and use supply and see if that works. And if it does, then you've saved having to give up an ace that could go to another role that's equally important. Gotcha. All right. And then session aces are D8s for the role. Is that correct? Or is it Double D4s? checking. Uh, session ace is D4. The critical D4. ace is the D8. That's Character it. ace okay. and session ace are D4s. Session aces are limited to that particular session. I'm just applying it to our next one because the diagnosis phase will sort of get into that at the for the tail end of this. And then next session will be going full into that and investigating more about what this lead is in the primeval garden. Cool. Um, I think I'll, I'll grab that session ace. And I think it like narratively comes out as gone and just uh, kind of like lecturing everyone with like the new information it might be a little bit of information overload but Gunnan is like super excited that she got some probably got access to a few researchers that she otherwise wouldn't have really been able to speak with and get stuff that they're like she's like oh this the study just ended they just got that in information so it's like hot off hot off the press is that the phrase I don't know and then she's just like rattling off like all this academic <laughs> information she's showing like charts and graphs and she's like it's a two percent negligible data and like you're like wow that's great I guess <laughs> it, 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 I think it's it, not it's also... mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just, just nod and smile nod and smile <laughs> But I, and I also think you probably had to deal with a few of the less than pleasant people who often book, like were very restrictive about that. Mm -hmm. I can think of one in particular who would have just been like, "Why exactly are you bothering me with your? Why are you wasting my time in the middle of this?" And you you caught them on a good day. They're mm -hmm. like, "Please get access to this so you can get away from me right now." <laughs> yeah, Gunnan is like just pulling out all these like, well, I have these recommendation forms from and then Ephemera has written this special, there's a seal on it and it's just like <laughs> presenting like a bazillion things and you're just like, it's time for my break, I think. <laughs> and and you, you, you definitely, this as you're walking away, uh, you definitely hear that. Uh, no, they say to you directly, how about this? I will grant you immediate access and you never mention my ex's name in front of me ever again. <laughs> That Good. was one of the letters of recommendation. Okay, got it. It was from ephemera. <laughs> it was from ephemera. You get the sense that it was not a good breakup <laughs> on the end for for uh, Moira. It just uh, it's definitely a look of like seething rage and just like <sighs> I'm already done and it's only like 10 a.m. <laughs> Y'all get but... that gossip as well, along with all the graphs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Farley, uh, what did you get for your result? Well, I got a seven as well. Um, and Farley is from the primeval garden, the able lands we're going to be heading to. So I think Farley uh, would at this point just be like uh, taking time to stock up on stuff that they think they're going to need uh, going back into this stuff that uh, would be harder to find in the primeval garden um then here in the big city and i think i'm gonna take uh uh another um not ace the uh object or whatever what was the term for it 
Oh, the supply. Supply. That's the one. Yeah, they're gonna take yes. a supply. I, I also just double checked. It is the kind. Uh, supply is the kind of thing that you would need in certain synthesis moves. Ah, okay. So well, yeah. in getting you in actually being able to create something to help deal with this. Yes, perfect. So it is a valuable resource to have on. And so you do manage to get a lot of that material. You definitely find uh, a, another fellow weirdo, like fungi enthusiast, just sort of chilling out. Uh, let's uh, let's just call her, uh, we'll call her Artemis for obvious reasons. Uh, just, you definitely hear her sort of talking in that kind of way that it's like, am I being invited to like a commune out in the woods kind of way? <laughs> like they're definitely like trying to sell it the way that someone tries to sell like a timeshare. Mm -hmm. But just imagine a very gay commune out in the woods is is, is what the timeshare being sold is. <laughs> just sort of like, so um, I definitely think uh, you're onto something here and like gives you, passes over a bunch of notes in their, uh, their experience and such. It's like, but you know, it, you you don't need to go to like a formal place in order to get this kind of information. You know, we have a group that we're just sort of piling together. You know, I have uh, my girlfriend, my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my girlfriend's ex, uh, my girlfriend, uh, their partners, uh, their boyfriends, and then uh, my girlfriend, my girlfriend, and uh, my other girlfriend that we're, we're like putting a group together just to sort of be out. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're interested and you want to like join us, you know, it's an option. As intrigued and I am, as I am, and I am, I'm afraid we have places to be and uh, people to do. So uh, I'm afraid I'll have to give that a pass. But next time that comes around, I am, I am absolutely. And once we've sorted all this stuff out, you better believe it. I, I love someone who knows what they want. It's great. <laughs> uh, just, just, we'll see. Is I'll talk to you another time. It's just very spaced out, like throughout the <laughs> entire conversation. And like you just hear them muttering as they leave that it. it's like people to do, huh? <laughs> just like thinking it over leaving. But you are all called to a meeting with Ephemera. Who uh reason I had a, a slight grimace way earlier was that uh I once again rolled a six. On her rumor mill move. Come on, ephemera. So. They tell you. That they have not had really good confirmation of whatever this thing is. The most that they've been able to get out of the situation is that something moving throughout the primeval garden sometimes being in the swamp area sometimes being deep in the forest sometimes being near the river pod community where the selkies live uh where the inland selkies live something appears to be charming people away from their homes and folks are having really vivid hallucinations about potentially ending up on like drowning somewhere. It's not great. So that's about no one has ever actually put in that harm as of yet, but there is a huge sense of like worry from a lot of the local communities there about what this could turn into or what this is. Cause no one has seen something like this happening in ages. Like there are occasional hallucinogenic effects that happen from just flora that are here in the, in the primeval garden. But as far as ephemera is able to, to find out there is nothing this particular and this weird, this specifically weird has shown up before. She's uh, taking the time to make sure you have proper gear and supplies to help deal with the situation, but she unfortunately wasn't able to get more info. She's been 
you get the definite sense that they've been dealing with like even even though their mask their mask face kind of appearance tends to be just whatever they want it to be every single variation of their form that you've seen in the past few months has had bags under the eyes just absolutely tired with dealing with all of this stuff Well, I think before we head out, I'm going to make sure that uh, they have a little gift bag of some calming mushrooms and some tea, maybe like a nice heat blanket, you know, just to like kind of help them chill out a little bit. Because um, we, we do appreciate the help, even if uh, the help we've been given isn't their top work. It's definitely, think, it's a case of like, they wish they could help more, but they're, they're swamped. I think like in front of everyone else, Ganon is like, don't worry, we, you don't have to worry about anything to do with this mission. We've got it. We've clearly, uh, like, look at these results. And like, there's like a scribbled out paper of like all the lead up to <laughs> each of the cure. And she's like, we cured two of them. Um, and then I think as everyone is leaving at the end, she like slides like a little like baggie of like herbs and stuff, like a tea kind of thing. Like, yeah, I, as I said it, I was like, wait, this is, I don't know a how to baggie? present. <laughs> slides at her a baggie when everyone else has left the room. Um, Just I think on uh, more is because how Gana has gotten like... through studying. <laughs> This I, is this I is kind of secret more, stash. <laughs> it's more that it's just like, oh, my mom always makes this like tea, but she just doesn't want to say this in front of everyone because she's like, no one can know that I need help from my mom sometimes. <laughs> so now, she, like, now, now we know how 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 Kanan's mom has been handling Kanan as well. <laughs> Her, her mom is just like it's just a drop of a whiskey and she will fall asleep and be out of my hair <laughs> rub it right on the gums it'll be fine <laughs> go to sleep baby gun <laughs> so you are able to arrive at some point in the primeval garden no Think of all the scenarios you have of like deep winding forests with different trails. And imagine moments where the trees start becoming so tightly packed that it gets hard to move. And then all of a sudden they change and you see the ground around you has moved from being kind of a tough, firm earth to almost like swamp and mud. Everywhere around you are these vivid greens and yellows. And occasionally, like, vivid, bright purples of various flora that are around here. And occasionally, because I think Farley would know this, uh, creatures that are masquerading as flora that are, are definitely in the big, like, uh, Venus flytrap category. And, you know, occasionally there's, a, there's an actual Venus flytrap that you're like, oh, I'm safe away from it. And you have to run as you arrive because you notice that it picks itself up out of the ground from its from its roots and it starts trying to go after something. Horrifying. It's... Horrifying. Yes. Yes. And the weird thing is, is that after you arrive and Ephemera set you down here, uh, you look back to where you enter the forest from, you can't see the entrance or really where the exit to it was like the moment you look back it just looks like it keeps going on forever spooky yeah don't worry about that guys it happens all the time <laughs> like, and it's eh. just to herself this is why i don't leave the lab this is why i don't go out <laughs> into the forest people keep saying touch grass i this is why i don't <laughs> is precisely why I don't leave it. 
I, she's like taking some sweating. allergy medication she's like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> gotta be prepared for anything in here yeah. got my inhaler out <laughs> just spray it <laughs> yeah. jesus maze um astra's definitely like sweating pissing throwing up trying to keep her hands to herself and like not touch the potentially deadly plants but is like oh that looks so cool i want to poke it <laughs> Just ask me first is all I ask. Can I touch that? <laughs> no, don't touch that, that one. That? Yes. That one's that one's okay, but don't don't no, not that one. Don't don't even look at it. Okay. It it preys on eye contact. If you eye look contact? at it, it will attack. <laughs> that one? <laughs> yeah, that one's am okay. I close? <laughs> <laughs> am I warmer or am I colder? <laughs> <laughs> there. There, there's a lot of creatures here that could probably eat you whole. There are a lot of flora here that would eat those creatures whole. And then there are also a lot of just flora here that are just like really pretty and easy. And there's a lot of like edible like like flora here as well. That's stuff that like looks horrendously dangerous. And like you you pick a bud off of it and like you eat it and it's like it tastes like strawberries. Or it tastes like fruit leather or something like that. It's a very strange kind of thing like this place is the definition of wild nature incarnate to the degree that it just shifts terrain every now and then like some places kind of stay constant but they're more like anchor points that are fulcrums around which everything else just kind of moves yeah welcome everybody to the primeval garden and i think what I'm going to do for this to end us on good space uh, to end so that we don't get too much into this before while well, Minnie is not here, I will give folks, let's say, two two moves, like two moves worth of time to decide what they want to do to try and investigate in the diagnosis phase for where you're at. So this is a matter of before you can treat it, you need to figure out what the heck this thing terrorizing people is. So give you all like about two and then I'll leave the last bit of time so that we can do our outros and make sure we're passing along and have time to do the things. Anybody got any starting ideas? Um... I just need oh, yeah. to say that Abigail is snoring right now. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Hang on. Everyone, turn up the volume as max as possible. <laughs> I don't know oh. if that picked up or not. <laughs> I, I heard it. I heard it. It was very cute. <laughs> she snores really loud sometimes. Bless her little heart. Aww. She's such a weirdo. Um, but yes, I would like to do yep. something if I can find that screen. Where did I put it? What the fuck? Where did I put it? Ciao. Okay. Ciao. Okay. Um, I think what I would like to do is pull a thread, uh, maybe ask around for some information. So I feel like Farley would probably know the best places to go to ask about this sort of a thing. Okay, so pull a thread. I want you to roll 2d6 plus a lure. Okay. What's my lure? I don't remember. Not much. Oh, good. It's negative one. So that's going to be a seven. Fun. Barely. Still, just barely crescent. Still made it. <laughs> still got it. So you can pick one from the options of you know where the monster was last seen. You know where to find a survivor of the monster's last attack. You know the site of the most recent rampage. Mm -hmm. and Or you know where the monster used to nest before it went berserk. And your information is going to be flawed and something nasty awaits you when you arrive because you got <laughs> seven to nine. Classic. Um, I think I'm going to go with, I know where the monster was last seen. Okay. 
Now, I can give you the option here. Would you like uh, the two closest communities you can think of that would be pleasant to you? Because there are there is a local family, the Flytraps and the McCoys, who uh, and the Coys, who would uh, be a possibility to go visit. But uh, they've been fighting for decades, so you probably yeah. don't want to talk to them. <laughs> you could. I'm not going to rule it out, but it, it might not go very well. So, you have uh, the Darrow River Pod community that is here. That has been a, a long-standing a Selkie community that has decided to live uh, inland. And they've created a thriving community here. That's one you could talk to. The other one is Heartbrook Village, which is a local established sort of a conclave of druids and other practitioners of why, of the natural magic of the world. Both could potentially get you some info. How close together are these two two areas? They're pretty separate, separated apart from one another, but because you are a local, you know best how to navigate here without yeah. too much issue. So don't necessarily worry about like travel time as a thing. It's just a matter of like what kind of information about where it last was would you like to receive it from, from yeah. the River Pod community or from uh, Heartbrook Village? I think the River Pod community, because there were people nearby having dreams of drowning. So I think probably talking to them is the best idea. Okay, so here's the deal with that. So you chose uh, where the monster was last seen. Do I have that right? Or yeah. Okay. So there is um, uh, there is a local kind of like uh, there's a local selkie doula who goes by the name of Mary. Uh, has a rather interesting job with having to f oversee births of you know like people have births and it's like a squealing like seal <laughs> pops out of somebody and then it's like this is a lot to handle for some folks let's just try and calm them down and ease this process as best we can um uh this individual who is a wheelchair user who seems to be using a wheelchair that has been adapted to magically shift its uh its actual wheels and its design to naturally coast over Dope. places like a river or like muddy uneven terrain it's like vines and ivy start growing out from around the wheels and create their own little like floating platforms or little ways to like keep it constantly stable it like just constantly magically adapts to fit it but mary would let you know that recently um there was something seen heading out towards uh the swamp areas like deeper into the forest, like in the parts where like it gets very muddy and it gets more like a think a mangrove kind of swamp where like all the vines are like uh, all the like roots of trees are like massive and like making their own like little like almost like nooks and crannies. But the water is like far deeper than you think it is. And uh, I will say for you, Farley, while your group is getting the information, uh, you are able to talk to Mary alone, but you have an experience of uh, looking out into the river uh, past where the river pod community ends. There's a tree that's marked that's sort of like the boundary line, and you see deeper in the water, somewhere in the forest, you see a pair of eyes that is just staring at you. Like, just, like, following Farley around, no matter how they move? Yep. Okay. It is That's just crazy. watching you continuously. And depending on if you look back or not... Yeah. You just feel a strong sense of, like, I should follow this. I should walk towards it. Well, Farley is a creature of uh, impulses. So yeah, I think Farley's just gonna be like, oh, okay. Let's see what's going on down here. I love creepy stuff. You You're go. You're absolutely putting Angela's promise of not killing our characters to the test. <laughs> <laughs> what well, now, it, it was, Angela? <laughs> yeah, it was something nasty does happen and you have this experience 
of at one point it's so calming moving towards it by the way your companions do notice this i will state that for the record they do notice this but you feel all of a sudden like something is wrapping around your legs from beneath the water because you have to start getting to about like knee height into the water yeah uh I think Aster would try and pull Farley back if it was getting to if Farley just started walking into the water randomly. I'd be like, Do no, that. think of your your dried mushrooms. You need them dry. <laughs> <laughs> trying to bring trying to bring them back. You do that and you swear for a second. Both of you, I think, I think, see this because uh, Astro, you get you get closer to Farley to pull them away. You swear for a moment, something viney and green was starting to poke out of the water. The moment you pull Farley away, it just just right back down. Cool, 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 cool. But that counts technically as a success. So I'll let, if someone else has one more idea real quick uh, we'll uh, for a move, then we'll call that good. That's where we'll end the session for today. Well, but you, you have idea. the information that something is in the water lurking and seemingly has an entrancing effect, and it is very aware, Farley looking for it now. My original move was like, oh, if we find whereabouts, I guess, this monster is, I could use my diagnosis move of bond, where I bond with the monster. But I feel like that's not good when it's, like, doing its own kind of hypnotism, I guess. Um, you could fight its hypnotism with your own. <laughs> you, you want me to bond with you? I'll make you bond with me. Yeah. You're stuck in here with me and my friendship, yeah. buddy. <laughs> I'm your friend. <laughs> can I try that? Bond? Yeah. Yeah. You can you, you can, can try that. Give it you just dive into the water and just grab it. Like, no, we're gonna be friends whether you like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> I Give saw you. Do do the role. I forget which move this is specifically, uh, Gas, uh, but plus a lore. Right plus a lore. Give when it you a spend go. Time you're a monster trying to figure out what's wrong with it. You can deliberately try and bond with them, roll a lure, 10 plus, you uh, make a connection, and you start the symbiosis phase one, a spot up on the control track. And then- That's good. Seven, oh, yeah. Yeah. seven and nine, you fail to make a connection, but may spend one supply to ask the mentor a question about how to feel the monster. Well, you don't have a mentor. Um, <laughs> no, you do. You your mentor is not just not with your us. mentor is always available. Not is just us. not able to like solve the problem. <laughs> is like trying to touch yeah. base with everyone around you. Like the the implication is that they they can't fix the problem, but they are available to help out in some ways. Like with these kinds of moves. Well, after all that rule reading, watch me roll under a six, three and a one. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so. Uh, let me double check on the moves. Is this one of your specific Simba uh, diagnosis moves? Yes. Bond. Bond. Let me see how that It doesn't say out. anything on a failure, I don't think. No, it doesn't. So you can't do anything to me. <laughs> no, I can't do anything. I, I will give you this tidbit. Because I think, uh, Gask, if you haven't figured out what it is yet, uh, I think this will give it away for use in particular, possibly. Uh, when Aster tries to like move closer to the creature after in the aftermath of Farley, I like, try and interact with it. You have a similar experience of like its eyes are entrancing, but you spot for a fraction of a second. Its nose and its head pop out of the water. And you swear you catch a glimpse of a horse head. Helpy! Yeah! <laughs> I know 
and that is one. where and that is where we were going to end the session for today as uh, out of character gask has figured out what it is it is a kelpie in character you have no idea what no. this is Oh, you have no seaweed idea. Horse. Cool. <laughs> seaweed, seaweed horse. That's what could that possibly be? Because I, I love Kelpies. Kelpies are some of my favorite creatures. Some of the best lore ever so for a creature. Cool. And it's not the other. And I can't. And also because I can't use the other creature with, I think it's like it starts with a K because apparently that scares a lot of people. And it's just specific reasons to not use that one. But thank you everybody for tuning in today for what was the. Uh, it's called Narcola V or something like that. I don't oh, remember. Oh, yes, yes, maybe. yes. Yeah, you're not supposed... To, it's it's like a very dangerous, like, associated stuff around it. Sort of why I'm, like, cagey about using it. So, uh, wanted to just say for everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to help us out here. Again, uh, we are going to be back next week for more, more gaming. Hopefully, Minnie will be back with us. I'm so sad whenever she's sick and gone. I love her. I miss her. Um, we would just like, again, to thank all the folks who rated us, gave us a really early push uh, at the beginning, even through our little tech goblins that we had to manage real quick, just kind of nip out uh, nip out, and then come back in. If you haven't already been able to support us through, and you have the means to do so, consider subbing to the channel. All this helps to keep uh, the lights on, metaphorically speaking, here for all the work that we do here. And I absolutely love how much just it it means seeing how many different people each month and like ongoing keep supporting this channel it's great to see the folks wanting to see these kinds of stories told by folks who don't always get to tell them and also if you want to catch so many of these stories that uh we are involved in telling we have a very busy week ahead of us Tomorrow, we have Regency Remixed. Tuesday, we have Spy.edu. Wednesday is Roll for Luck. Thursday is Invincible Sword Coven. And the premiere of our Humberwood, Humblewood Holiday Special. And Friday is Starfinder. We are all back next Saturday, as we've mentioned before. But please, do not just support us. Support everyone on this channel. Everyone's putting in great work, great stories, different genres, different systems. Really, if you feel like, I don't know what I think about this system, trust me. We probably have a show sometime during the week you'll have some interest in. We have a great we have great talent here, great people, and it's absolutely wonderful to get to share this story in this world with my players who engage with making simulacrums of my god. I appreciate you all and your indulging all of this. Uh, and also uh want to give everyone a second to shout themselves out real quick, just one to two things and who are you and where we can find you. So I'm going to start with how I did it before. Gask, you're up. Hi, I'm ready this time. I'm so pumped. I'm ready. My name's Gaskinator. I'm not ready. <laughs> so why I do it this way? Oh, no. Oh, okay. No, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm... Hello, my name is Gaskinator. I've been playing Astu today. Uh, you can find me where, where... <laughs> the attempt was made. Yes, you can find me in the lovely links. After, uh, underneath where I've been roasted below um, and uh, as for projects none ongoing other than this at the moment but stay tuned <laughs> mystery next huh. <laughs> Rue if you want to take it away from there hello everyone I'm Rue I've been gone in this episode um, so I am every episode <laughs> uh you can find all my links in uh, the chat. And uh, currently, I am in the Hutopia Harvest Bundle, along with 24 other awesome creators with a bunch of different games, a lot of new systems. Um, you can find my game, Kick Garlic, which is a hack of my first game, Kick Rocks. It's a game you play while you're taking a walk. You tell a story of a vampire. Um, so yeah, go ahead and go go check out that bundle because there are lots of amazing games in there I, I i may or may not also be one of the contributors to that bundle and i can definitively say everyone in that bundle is fantastic at what they do speaking of uh last but not least people who are fantastic at what they do nikki oh shucks 
Um, hey everybody, I'm Nikki. Uh, I was playing Farley. You can find me uh, under I'm Poppy Field on Instagram or TikTok. Uh, you can also see me tomorrow over on the Vancouver by Night channel playing as Denny the Tiefling Bard in Phandalin by Night. That starts at two o'clock PST. Um, uh, apart from that, you can see me here on Saturdays. So come back next week, please. Also, sorry if Abigail was snoring the entire time I was talking. My apologies. Oh, no. The channel, which frequently loves and shouts out in the <laughs> chat about cats, has to deal with the cat. It's the worst scenario, uh, worst possible world. Um, last but not least, uh, my name is Angela Lemos Mogrejo. I use she, her pronouns, and I've been your game master, master of ceremonies, uh, assorted titles. I believe in a previous one, I used fire burp as my title, and uh, one of my favorites. You can uh, essentially catch me here and hopefully uh, in uh, some upcoming things that uh, we are very excited to be sharing real soon that uh, our channel has been putting a lot of work into. Secret, secret stuff. Not secret so far, but it will be coming out very soon and we're plotting and super excited to share some really fun times uh, with everybody. And also, I am uh, the director of operations for Girls Write These Worlds. We're working on a zine that is coming out January 19th. And I have nothing but absolute pride in the writers that have been working alongside to cultivate this vision of a zine about rebirth and new beginnings. Uh, I get to do some of my favorite things in the world for a job, y'all. It's, it's pretty great here. And uh, speaking of pretty great things, uh, we are going to be Raiding over into T TRPG, who are playing Masks, featuring our good buddies Jay and Momo, who are absolute darlings. We love them, and Mask is always fun. And TTRPG, great space. With that, I leave you with my usual affirmations to you in this world. Remember, holidays can be very difficult, and not everyone celebrates both not just the same holidays, but treats them as a time of happiness. Sometimes very difficult things can come up during these times. Remember, be there for one another. Support one another through the periods of time that feel as though the, the deepest sadness will grip your heart and help them find a space and time to feel joy, revelry, and a sense of hope that comes with knowing that as one cycle of a year ends, a new one approaches, and we find ourselves with more opportunities to find even more delightful things to cause chaos with. So on that note, I love you all. Take care, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.